And it is beginning. Today, we got a notification from YouTube that our two biggest episodes featuring Joe Rogan, Michael Malice, Alex Jones, and many others had been removed for retroactive policy enforcement. I spent some time on the phone with Google uh, angrily discussing this. And there's a lot to break down in this, but um, it's an election year. And so three years, and, and for one of the episodes longer than three years, four years, but between three and four years after these shows had already aired and they had no policy violations, they come back and make up fake reasons as to why these episodes are being removed from YouTube. What they told us effectively said to me, we cannot be on YouTube. My only options would be to delete and purge every single show and clip from this YouTube channel based on what they told me. And then they said, no, 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 don't do that. But we'll get into all the finer details as we, we begin to talk about. Th there's a lot to break down. I'm going to get into the uh, dirt and grime of how the business operates, why we do the things we do, what our moves are going to be uh, going forward. I've already had discussions with some top men, top men. And I think everyone's going to be very, very excited as to what this means, because YouTube basically just said, we don't want you. We don't like you. Get the out. So uh, let me let me save the greater details for the actual segment because we're doing the intros. But we do have a lot of other news. Uh, Biden, I guess, is claiming that uh, something happened with a plane crash. Was it uncle or something? His uncle got eaten by cannibals. Almost, almost. Eaten almost. By <laughs> All right. We got to make sure we get politics in there. I don't know that there's anything too uh, tremendous politically, but. I think the biggest story actually was Bloomberg writing that do, uh, the UAE's attempt at weather manipulation resulted in mass flooding, which is wreaking havoc on the country. And now you've got all these articles popping up from the left. Like, no, it's a conspiracy theory. Weather modification did not cause the great flooding. Uh, yeah, they were cloud seeding. And according to Bloomberg, the cloud seeding made these floods substantially worse. Major backfire in government weather manipulation, I guess. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about th th that as well. And then we have this viral video where children staged a walkout of their school complaining that furries have litter boxes in the bathrooms. The guy filming the video says, I heard that was a rumor. That's not true. And they're like, no, they're there. Now, we've not confirmed this independently. So I think it's important to take all that information with a grain of salt. But I really don't believe someone orchestrated 70 children leaving a building and lying about something. That seems like a conspiracy theory. And Occam's razor would suggest these kids are pissed off about furries in their school and litter boxes in their bathroom. So we'll talk about that before we do. Ladies and gentlemen, head over to castbrew.com. Why? Because they're trying to ban us. Buy our coffee, I guess. We got big plans for Casper Coffee. We want to build physical locations all over the country. We have a physical location being built right now in Martinsburg, West Virginia. It's not so much about coffee. It's about the third place. Somewhere you can hang out, meet like-minded individuals, share an honest cup of joe, and talk about ideas and, and get organized and build community. Something that is tremendously antithetical to the uh, authority establishment plans. They want you living in a pod, eating the bugs in virtual reality, and we want to resist that. Now, the coffee's delicious, don't get me wrong, but uh, I recommend you buy it. Appalachian Nights is everybody's favorite. We are now sold out of Re-Rise with Roberto Jr., but there's going to be a small limited batch popping up of 700 bags. We're going to be selling those about seven bucks each just to, to move them because we had the extra bags lying around. So we're going to brew some of the fresh coffee, but it is good coffee. It's my favorite. Appalachian Nights, of course, are the best. And when you buy Casper coffee, uh, the the money that we're getting from, we're, we're not taking any profits or anything out right now. Hopefully in the future, it's a big profitable company. It's all being reinvested and setting up these physical locations in Martinsburg. If you're a member of TimCast.com's elite club, that is you click join us and it's a hundred bucks a month. You're going to get a key fob. You're going to be able to walk up to the building in the secret side entrance and boop, your way right on in, walk upstairs and hang out in the club. That's our plan for the private club. But become a member at TimCast.com for 10 bucks a month and you'll get access to our Discord server where you can hang out and chat with like-minded individuals and network digitally. It's not perfect, but uh, it's better than nothing. And you'll get access to our members-only uncensored shows where you can uh, uh, even call in if you are a member. Now, more importantly... I think it's important to stress that this show uh, right now, it, if it weren't for TimCast members, it would not exist. The cost of flying out guests, putting up people in hotels, paying for the, sta uh, the drivers and the coordination and all that stuff is very expensive. So we are only able to do this because you guys are members. So naturally, when YouTube effectively declares war on us and there's a lot of breakdown in that, there's a great risk. 
And so uh, obviously we have options. There is a demand for great media shows like ours, and many people are interested. And YouTube uh, is is interested in destroying their company and brand. Fine, whatever. We'll see what happens when TikTok gets banned, I guess. Maybe YouTube's not worried about it. But uh, I strongly request y'all become members because uh, you'll get access to our uncensored show, a bunch of other bonus stuff. You'll get to watch live spaces with Josie, if you're a fan of Josie's. And uh, we've got many more stuff. We've got a couple documentaries. We'll be releasing those on multiple platforms soon as well. But uh, become a member. Hang out in the Discord. We got more member stuff we're working on. I think the uh, physical locations are going to be a blast. Don't forget to also smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to subscribe on Rumble at rumble.com uh, uh, slash Timcast IRL. I think that's our URL, Let's right? check it out. We'll make sure we got that one right. Mm -hmm. And uh, follow me personally on X at Timcast. Those are going to be very important because next week we'll be moving to a new studio. I won't say much more beyond that, but follow us in those places if you catch my drift. Unfortunately, today we did have a guest. Um, there was an, uh, a, a medical emergency. So instead, Phil Abonte is the guest. How you doing, everybody? My name is Phil Abonte. I'm the lead singer of the heavy metal band All That Remains. I'm an anti-communist and a counter-revolutionary. I was like, we have no guest. Uh, Phil's famous. Phil, sit in the chair. I followed your work for a long time. I'm glad you're <laughs> Thank here. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate and, uh, it. Uh, and then in third chair, we have Mr. Bocus. What a great cat. It's a painting of Mr. Bogus. Those his eyes really Bogus. nice job, Josie. Yeah, I called everybody. I was like, oh man, you know, um, you know these things happen. It's yeah. rare. It, it's rare, but it, it happens last minute, th you know. And so, uh, you but know. then you got the animal surge that just steps up every chance, every moment. Yeah, yeah we'll just we'll totally. just make search talk more tonight. Find a knife, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, appreciate that. People watch like people watch the show. I mean, the guests are obviously it's great to have the guests and stuff like that to get a, a different perspective. But people really do watch the show because of you're a guest, Phil. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of uh, like what do you do in your normal life? This show, the show. I, like I was it. trying to get Richie Jackson to come. Actually, the first person we tried calling was Libby. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we'll just see if Libby can come in and fill in the seat because she comes in all the time. And she was unavailable. And I was like, I know who needs to come on the show. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. Oh, that'd be great. He was too We're, far away. He wasn't uh, able to make Ray. it. I was like, that actually would be a really great it show. Was so awesome. Everybody, awesome. Everybody knows him. He's Everybody so does. funny. Yeah. Really and, uh, and he works here. <laughs> ex, am I, I don't want to speak entirely. Ex-Marine is right? Police. No, 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 not former. Former Marine. Yeah. Oh, that's a different word you use? Well, you're not, you're never not a Marine. Once you're I a Marine, it. you're always a Marine. Thank so you. there's a former because you were, you know, form, you were sir in service and you're, when you're not in service and you can be called a former Marine. But I was calling never. Richie Jackson too. I was like, you know, he's a, he's a wild, crazy guy. Yeah, but everybody is. just was like, man, it was a perfect storm of everybody dipping. Yeah. What a crazy day. Yeah, really. Uh, right. Sir, just pressing the buttons. Or Ian's here too. Oh yeah, know. hello, hi, welcome. Let's do this. I love the meta shows where we talk about like the show beneath the show. Like, oh, here we go. I mean, we're going to talk about nitty gritty. I'm going to, I'll, 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 I'll break down everything for everybody. I mean, I, I typically do. I wonder if we're like the most transparent of shows when it comes to how shows run. <laughs> Among them. Let's jump to this story from the post millennial. So uh, earlier today, I was working out. I had a great mini ramp session. Uh, I would say I'm around 20% of my capabilities. I haven't skated mini ramp in a very long time. And uh, Richie and I were, were getting, getting the session going. I burned 1600 calories. It was glorious. Then I went to physical training and I almost passed out because I was really pushing it. I heard you were talking about like your blood pressure was like, you felt like you were going to, or no, you're, you're, you're. VO2 Watch max was telling you that you maxed out. Yeah. 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 I had uh, about 33 minutes of VO2 max. And then as soon as this, I get a message from Dane, our social media guy. And he's like, Hey, take a look at this. And it says your, your videos have been removed. So two of the biggest, the two biggest Tim cast IRL shows on YouTube were deleted both today, three years after they aired for with retroactive policy enforcement that they claim were always in effect, but only now. They decided to remove the biggest episode on YouTube, of course, was Joe Rogan, Alex Jones, Blair White, Michael Malice, uh, me. Uh, I believe Luke, Luke Rakowski yeah, was, Luke there. was there. Uh, Ian was there. Was uh, Drew, Drew Hernandez. Hernandez was there. It was a massive show in Austin in this trailer. Joe Rogan pulls up to our to our big trailer mobile studio and he comes in and we're like, let's roll. And we had like one hundred and sixty thousand concurrent viewers. Massive. There's no policy violations. We talked about things everybody always talks about. We're very, very strict on this show. You guys know we've deleted episodes live during the show, and we've been working on engineering a dump button, which basically means if there's ever a policy violation, we hit a button, and then it the, the, basically it, there's a delay so that whatever violated the rules never appears, and we don't have to take the show down anymore. So we, we, we built all this. Show's deleted. 
The other episode was the Michael Malice Alex Jones episode, which was our second biggest, which we did after they took down the first one. Alex Jones and Michael Malice came on the show. It was hilarious and fun. They deleted it and gave us a, a, a warning. Uh, I think, I don't know if we got, I don't think we ever got a strike from it. No, we didn't. We got a warning from it. And the warning was on the channel for uh, two or two and a half years. As soon as this happened, I'm on the phone with Google and they're saying, we can't tell you what the policy violation was. And I'm like, how are we supposed to do better and fit your terms of service if we have no idea what you're mad about? And they're like, too bad. I said, okay. I meet, so I had all of these people e messaging and commenting, being like, oh, you're, you're babies. You took the episode down, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I called Michael Malice and Alex Jones and said, guys, can you come back immediately and do the show again? They want to take down our episode and they won't tell us why. We'll do the show again. And so a week later, Alex and Michael came back. And that was at the time our biggest episode ever, the Try Me YouTube episode. I, on, I can only assume they were not happy we did that. But I got to tell you. Before we even had Alex Jones on, I emailed our liaison at Google and said, what are the rules pertaining to Alex Jones? Is he allowed to be a guest on shows? And they said, absolutely. And I said, okay, you guys have no issue with this then? I said, no, no, he just can't have his own channel. I said, done. They deleted the episode. They found whatever reason. We did the show again. No problems. Over the past several years, I've actually spoken with people at Google and they said they were great episodes. They were fine. I've had people be like, Oh, my friends work at YouTube. They're big fans. I've had people, people who work at YouTube tell me I love watching the show every night. They took down our two biggest episodes at the same time. One, they claimed we promoted QAnon. That is, I, I say defamation. I've never promoted QAnon. I mock people who are promoting QAnon. We, when people on the show ever mention anything about it, we say that's silly nonsense. They claimed that we had some kind of uh, uh, vaccine medical misinformation. So you didn't get a strike on that one, but it's okay. Here's what this means. I'm on the phone with Google. Immediately after this happened, I get an email and they're like, we just want to let you know we took these episodes down. And I said, three years after these episodes aired, you are now claiming a policy violation. And they were like, well, it was always against the rules. And I said, okay. Here's what we're going to do. I will instruct my social media guy right now to delete every single video off the Timcast IRL channel. We will air the episodes and a week later, delete them from the platform. We will put the clips up and a week later, delete them from the platform because that is the only thing we can do based on retroactive policy enforcement. If you tell us what we're doing is fine and we we behave in that way for three years. I've got a thousand episodes. I said, we've got 1,006 episodes, probably about 990 are on YouTube plus every single clip, which is three to six clips per episode. And you tell us what we did on that show was fine for three years. That means from that point on till today, we did the exact same things we did in that episode. How many episodes am I supposed to go through now to figure out if they violate the rules? And I was told by the person at Google, well, I don't know of any other episodes where this is an issue. And I said, sure. And you didn't know for three years this episode was an issue. So my only option then is to delete every single show off the platform or you're going to ban us. What they effectively told me was in it. it no, no, it's fine. You're fine. And I said this. OK, then someone at the highest level of you of Google or YouTube came down to you guys and said, delete those episodes. I don't want them on the platform. Make up a reason. And you're telling me it's fine and we're not going to get banned because you know it's political and it was someone at Google who ordered the shows to be removed. If that is not the case, then you have retroactively placed policy enforcement actions against us, which leaves me with no alternative but to delete every video off this channel. Otherwise, at any moment, we could be banned. And they said, no, no, I, I don't know. I can't tell you that. OK, great. You can't. Well, I immediately made some calls to top men who I will not reveal. We have big plans coming up for the studio move, which is taking place this weekend. Uh, a lot of people have said, Tim, go to Rumble. Tim, go to Rumble. Well, you know, we're on Rumble. And then people ask us why the live show isn't on Rumble. The live show is the biggest driver of memberships to TimCast.com which is the only way we're able to do all of this. If we downsized and became like a uh, digital over the air show where we just Skype people in and stuff like that, sure, that shaves off a ton of money from our budget and we, we, we could make things a lot cheaper. But I think one of the things that makes the conversations on the show work better 
And I've talked to a lot of people in the industry about it, and everyone agrees is in-person conversations in real life. Well, I don't want to do that. That means right now, based on how much it costs to run this show, drivers, staff, hotels, etc., the amount of members we have is uh, maintaining. We, the, the, the amount of memberships we have is at a, at a decent amount where we make a little bit more every month than we spend on the show, which gives us the ability to invest in other projects. My concern when I talk to all these other big companies and they're like, we want Timcast IRL live here, here, or here or otherwise, is that the clips don't drive a lot of memberships. The live show does because once we wrap the live show, we say, hey, the show continues at Timcast.com, become a member to watch the members only uncensored. With that, we are maintaining a slight growth. We have a, we have a slight uptick a little bit in how many members we have, but we don't grow a, a whole lot. It's, it's, it's very slow and steady. And this means, based on the model we have, the show can continue. If we were to stop doing live on YouTube the way we are, divide it up to other platforms, we run the risk of deranking. We run the risk of losing a large portion of what funds the show, driving new members, and then we become a sinking ship. We would have to start firing staff, cutting corners, reducing investment in projects. Possible. We could do that. I'd prefer not to. So the conversations we've had with other big networks has been, can you cover the costs of how much we make through YouTube and ad revenue so that if we make this move and we lose money, we stay afloat for at least a certain amount of time? And typically the answers have been, I don't know, maybe. I don't know if we want to do that. And I say, okay, well then we're going to keep doing what we're doing on YouTube because the live show generates the memberships that make the show work. It's that simple. I'll let you guys in on another I don't know if it's a secret or whatever. Inside baseball. Inside baseball. I'm a big fan of Rumble. Uh, I'm friends with Chris Pavlovsky. He's a great dude. We use Rumble infrastructure for TimCast.com. We use Parallel Economy for our memberships. We are absolutely utilizing their infrastructure and they make money from it. We make money from it because we want to build the Parallel Economy. But there is a reality. When Rumble launched and we split our clips from YouTube to Rumble, we lost probably 40% of the revenue we got from YouTube. Because as much as Rumble is great and we want Rumble to exist and we want to be on Rumble, we don't make ad revenue off those videos. So when a video normally got 80 to 100,000 on YouTube, we would make a couple hundred bucks. Now the video on YouTube gets 50, 60,000 and on Rumble gets 30. That means we lost all of that ad revenue. So we have to maintain memberships. We can't just shut down and switch to Rumble because then we'd have to start laying people off and, 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 and shrinking the ship. Don't want to do that. We are currently having conversations with some other companies. Now that YouTube has made these moves, there is renewed interest in how we can make these changes. I don't want to say too much because business negotiations are ongoing, but there are some potentially big moves that may happen based on this. I think what we're seeing with YouTube is a few things. Just yesterday, many people noticed the view count on the show was going all wild and crazy, but that wasn't unique to us. It affected tons of other YouTubers and channels that were noticing weird issues pertaining to live and view count. And the day before, something similar happened. View counts crashed on a bunch of videos and people were like, whoa, my video didn't get any traffic. It was not unique to any one channel. Something must have happened at YouTube with a policy change. Now there's retroactive enforcement. I don't think it's a coincidence that around the same time, two episodes are nuked instantly. Maybe some new guy came in. Maybe they hired a new person. Who knows? Have no idea. I told Google, I cannot run a business if this is how you treat your, 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 your uh, business partners. This is an F you to me and a threat. They issued a warning on our channel requiring us to take a class to better understand how we broke the rules. But we didn't break any rules. Not a single rule was broken. They lied. They're liars. And so I said, if you email me, and say, due to this, that, or otherwise, we're going to remove these videos from your channel. Don't worry. No effect to you. I would grumble and complain. But when you issue a warning on my channel, you are saying, we are prepared to ban you permanently. We are prepared to take you down for a week the next time this happens. With any one of your videos from the past four years, it could happen. We are prepared to permanently ban you if we can find three more videos over the past four years that we can interpret as breaking the rules, your show is permanently banned in every respect off of YouTube. So I said, what, what should I do then? The only thing I can do is delete every single video. And then they, oh, no, you can't do it. 
I don't think it's a coincidence that it's 2024. We knew things were going to get crazy this year. And now YouTube has taken such an extreme and drastic action, such as a three year retroactive enforcement. So there's a couple things we can do. Um, we'll have more information on Monday. Uh, we have big plans. We're moving into our new studio on uh, Saturday is the big opening party and skate jam and contest. Friends and crew and friends of the show are going to be there. We're going to be eating catering, uh, courtesy of Dutch's Daughter. We're huge fans. They're a, a great restaurant in Frederick, Maryland. They make some of the best food. And uh, that will be the, the opening party. That means Monday, the show will be live from the new studio. And I'm just so excited because the cameras look so good. There's no more color issues and everyone looks a lot sexier. So it's going to be great. You look, everyone will look very thin with these cinematic, beautiful cameras. Uh, we're also going to be planning a change to how we, we broadcast the show. But considering uh, what just happened, there are some business happenings behind the scenes. I, I'd have no problem telling everybody literally what those plans are and, and what we're negotiating on. But because it involves third parties who are negotiating as well, it's a violation of their privacy. I won't do that. There may be some great, inf some great news on Monday, though. And it could benefit this show in many ways. And then I think following this, what we're going to do is ramp up marketing in ways we've never done before. So with YouTube taking this attack against us, we have a couple, we have a couple, uh, there's a couple things we can do. Here's a secret. It's not really a secret. I've mentioned, I've, I've mentioned this before. What I pay myself in terms of a salary comes from the Tim Pool Daily Show, which is youtube.com slash timcastnews. That show alone generates me personally, produced by me, 99%. I say 99 because sometimes someone who works here might send me something and you know, there's, there's, there's moderate assistance. But I wake up, I sit down, I reach the news, I monologue, I make a million dollars a year. It is just, a, just above a million bucks off of that morning show alone. If I did not do Timcast IRL, I would work a regular shift, have the rest of the day for family and travel. I could do the show literally anywhere in the world. With my girlfriend, we could, I could live in the mountains and we could ski all year round and do whatever and I have to worry about it. Timcast IRL does generate profit and it does generate hard assets and these things do benefit my net worth. I don't want to pretend that's not the case. I don't pay myself a salary based off what is coming from Timcast IRL, however. The, the, the overwhelming majority of the money basically covers the cost of everyone's salaries, travel, equipment, all of these things. Again, I stress the equipment and all that does add to my net worth. I'm not going to lie about that. But I'm not... I'm not doing this and I'm not making money from this. This is just something that is fun to do. That is important. I enjoy doing. I enjoy bringing people here. I think it's beneficial across the board. And then the small amount of excess revenue that we get basically invests in these other projects. So we've got uh, Pop Culture Crisis, of course. We've got uh, uh, Shane Cashman's Inverted World Show that we're building. We've got the Boonies Skate Show that we're building. That, uh, uh, and I will stress, the, uh, the boonie stuff is very, very expensive, but most of the cost is the building of a new studio for the sake of Timcast IRL. So what we need to do is there's two options. I just say, wow, they got us. We've lost. Why am I even dealing with these headaches? We're getting sued. All of this nightmare stuff for something that doesn't personally make me money that I can go spend on vacation at casinos and things like that. Again, I'll stress like there's profit and there's there's a net worth uh, gain, but it's it's like the, the exponential workload compared to how much you make. It's just I could work in the mornings on Tim Pool show and make a million bucks a year and then sell sponsorships and even make more and not have to think about it. Or here's what else we can do. We can work a deal with a uh, I don't want I don't want to say too much because it's it's going to be up to them when we when we do finalize a deal, but third parties and then attack this thing through massive marketing campaigns and uh, basically make it a, a point uh, a point that YouTube is not safe for your business. If you try to start on YouTube, they will with no warning and with no reason. And everyone already knew this, but let's stress this. They will destroy your company overnight. We have to build a parallel economy. And so that's the attack factor we're going to take. As of next week, hopefully we'll have more information on this as to what we're doing in terms of parallel economics and how we're going to support fund the show and grow the show with uh, in defiance of, of YouTube's ridiculous and insane retroactive enforcement. And hopefully we will plant the seeds 
Nay, I should say we will water the trees that have already been planted by other great people working hard on this, namely uh, those at these other social media networks. Shout out to uh, Rumble, of course, to to Bill Ottman, Mines, shout out to Elon Musk. And uh, we will water those trees that have already been planted. And then we will supplant and displace the corrupt and crooked establishment that breaks the rules for their own personal benefit and politics. So that's the gist of my rant. And uh, there you go. Was it would be minutes? great to federal or federate the uh, mines, rumble and X. I would love to see these platforms interlocking. That would be so hot. I have no idea what that means. It means like if you're on mines logged mm-hmm. in, you can follow your Twitter follower, your X followers or respond to your rumble comments. Oh, from yeah, I, mines yeah. I mean, and it's all yeah, one I don't kind think, of I imagine, network of networks. I imagine that doesn't really help the owners of the platforms, though. You'd be surprised. It, it seems like you're actually going to lose because like you're giving other people more, but uh, a rising tide raises all ships. It, it you really end up, it, it can end up becoming a really, really good. It's kind of like a, a federation of states. Well, I don't know uh, anything about the uh, financials of that, but I know that forty four billion dollars for X is a lot of money, and so <laughs> he's going to have to be able to make uh, make some kind of profit off of it. Uh, at least for at least for X, I don't know about um, you know what kind of financial situation Mines or Rumble is in, uh, but. Go ahead. Oh, I, I, I was a slightly going to tangent. Did you have another follow up? No, go ahead. That I, I, I got into internet video in 2006 because it's immensely powerful. I mean, you can change the world with an internet video and it was on YouTube. At first it was on MySpace, but MySpace was a little clanky and I would have to embed my YouTube videos on my MySpace blog and then email them to my friends so that they could hear my thoughts. And then uh, MySpace just, what happened was one month it got so popular that it was before virtual servers. They their, their traffic ground to a halt. You couldn't use the website for like a month and everyone jumped ship over to Facebook. But anyway, the point was, it was always about the internet video. It was never about YouTube. People would be like, they'd have their YouTube shirts and they'd be so proud. We do these YouTube live events. And I love that yeah. stuff, but it was about the internet video, the power of internet video. That's always what it's been about. It doesn't matter what network you're on. And I feel betrayed. It's a slight feeling of betrayal to have my stuff taken down by my provider, by my platform. And it's not my plan. I know, I understand it's not mine. That, and there are contracts involved, but it's like, you're supposed to have our back, man. No, we all saw the video that got released by, um, it was Breitbart and, uh, um, who else was it? Um, oh, I can't remember some tech company media website, Google staffers crying when Trump won. Yeah. The ideological capture that, you know, you see in colleges when it comes to like sociology departments and stuff like that and the humanities departments, um, that has been going on for a decade. Go ahead. What? Oh, you have, you, well, that, point. That's been going on for a decade. And that means they've been pumping people that believe the ideology that they're taught in school. Those people have been pumped out into society. So the reason that people that are at Google and, and in, you know, positions of, of at least some kind of authority and power, uh, you know, that it's because they, they get this idea. They got the ideology in college. So. We have a story here. Uh, I want to preface it by saying, if you're wondering why it is that three years after we aired them, two of our our two biggest shows on YouTube, granted, Darren Beatty was our biggest show ever. It's got like seven or eight million views. Yeah, he was, I, uh, I believe he's a former speechwriter for, for Trump. Mm-hmm. People really, really wanted to watch that show. They loved it. And it's on Rumble. But uh, our two biggest on YouTube were Alex Jones and Joe Rogan. If you're wondering why they got deleted, you need only look at this uh, uh, news story from the National Review. Police arrest Google employees who staged anti-Israel office protests. Need I say more? Employees at Google staged a sit-in of their own company, requiring the boss to call the police and have them physically removed. And they were placed on leave and their access was severed. Now, with employees like that, I wonder how it's even possible a show like this exists. I mean that that's the the whole of the the tech industry or whatever the the tech companies and stuff that's it is an ideology that is pervasive it's not obviously it's not everybody but because of the way that 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 ideology the people operate if you speak out too strongly or if you don't keep your head down they go to HR and accuse you of all kinds of things and then you're out and that that everyone knows that that happens in in basically in in modern corporate America today we have we have a video clip this is uh Cassie uh, Dillon, now yeah. Cassie Akiva. And you can see here, Google Office. All right, you guys gotta leave. You guys refusing to leave? Is yes. Yeah. Okay. You first stand up. Mm-hmm. And there it is. I mean, that's it. Google employees being arrested in a Google office. Is it for trespassing? 
Yes. Well, that's what she, yeah. And it's because they were protesting. Just think about how insane this is, okay? First, they weren't trespassing. They work at Google. They are in a Google office where they work. They go and sit in their boss's office and then say, we're now protesting. He says, you can get out of my office. Say no. He's like, I guess I have to call the police on you. Then they get arrested for trespassing where they work. I got to say, man, I am impressed. I am absolutely impressed with the left because, well, the right has everything to lose. Yeah. They're, the fabric of their nation they love so dear, the flag. The lives and futures uh, for their children, their sacred honor, blood and treasure. And many of them just say, I will not speak up, challenge the system because I have to feed my family. But they have everything to lose. These leftists are willing to protest at their own companies and get arrested after their boss calls the cops on them. That's that's the extent of their zeal. I mean, it's how do you win? When this is the case. Look at, there was that kid that burned himself alive. People are, I mean, if you've got people that are that are so uh, committed that they'll burn themselves alive, you know, over a, a, an ideology. I'm convinced that it's music is the solution. And it's uh, almost silly. Like I, I used to think I had to go find the people and then help them. And I'd go around and like, I got to get to that guy and I got to get to that guy. Then I realized if I just make the uh, best sound, that is, people no, come to me. The, and it creates like this environment of like, <laughs> That was the uh, that synergy. Was, that was the that was the '60s, man. That was the same <laughs> art. That's the same thing that's been people people have been saying since the '60s, and it didn't work then. It's because it they didn't do any drugs. Do you in remember? The 60s. Do, you, do you remember the South Park episode where the hippies are like, "We got to we got to fight the establishment." Okay, what do we do? We got to play harder, man. And they just <laughs> yeah. keep playing music. Yeah. Nothing's no. getting done. Yeah, but Dude. if you do it right, I mean, look at the Beatles. I've been watching so much Beatles music. The way that they transformed the world, the entire world. Well, let, let's, let's, let's music. let me, let me, I got to translate itself. Ianisms for the general uh, audience, right? Because a lot of people are posting one saying Ian is wrong. No, 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 no. Ian is not wrong. It's not the idea that music changes the world is that music builds influence. And once you're an influential person in entertainment and pop culture, you can change hearts and minds. That's why so many people are freaked out about Taylor Swift. She commands masses of, of, of fans because she's an entertainer with music. And then she writes a song called, what is it? You need to calm down, mm -hmm. which depicts conservatives as crack toothed yokels and insults them for not supporting the LGBTQ ideology. And that's the power of music. So perhaps it does sound a little naive, but let's translate that. Gener creating entertainment that people want to follow and makes them feel good gives you a path towards influencing them in a variety of ways from the indirect to the direct. You write a song, it's catchy, they like it and you slip in their insults of the right and conservatives, then once you're the most famous mu musician in the world, you get on stage and say, everyone go vote Democrat. And Republicans fear that. So Ian, I, I believe is correct in, in, in uh, uh, breaking down the idea. It's true. It's not just the song that does it. It's the industry that builds influence. Is that what you meant? Big time, yeah. Okay. And and you'll you don't even have to put the <laughs> lyrics in the song. Often what'll happen is you'll make a song that someone puts on repeat and listens to twenty times in a night, and then they'll go to your website and find out who you are and then they'll just adopt your politics. They don't even they don't they're like nineteen year olds or fourteen year olds and stuff. Well, I mean, right, right, but real real quick, the mm -hmm. Taylor Swift song, I think it's called You Need to Calm Down, is it that is, it? Yes, it is. Imagine the fourteen and fifteen year olds who are hanging out at a bagel shop and that song is playing and they're not really listening, and in the background she's like don't step on my gown. You need to calm down. That is indoctrinating young people towards these ideas. It is the radio screaming in their ears everywhere they go. Right is bad. And there's a comic about this, actually. It's a it's like someone pencil drew this comic. It's great. And some guy says, you're brainwashed. And the other person says and, that, and then it shows the a guy a music festival where the singers like republicans are bad a guy on the tv saying republicans are bad a guy outside yeah. yelling republicans are bad protesters republicans are bad and then the person's being like you're brainwashed actually that that is entertainment and 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 influence yeah i mean and that there is there is truth to that so like if you're going to talk about being able to influence the culture but i mean that's the that's the point of really like the overall point of just tim cast like as a as an entity right like it's the the irl actually moves the needle 
you know i i mean um a friend of mine was talking today about this the situation with youtube and stuff i think that we should reach out to, to to some of the people in congress we know and see if congress will send someone one of the whether it be gates or whether it be uh someone just to send a letter to google and be like hey did you guys take this down because of uh you know why did you take this stuff down why are you censoring people i mean i know it, that they have you know a terms of service and stuff but if they don't have a legitimate answer i mean it's something that the that it does affect the interest of the american people so it's it's something that they might do. I mean, I, I'm not I agree. saying that they there will. might be in the term. I haven't read the Google terms in a long time, if ever, actually, in totality. But it might say can ban anyone at any time for any it reason. Doesn't. They put those silly and that could be unconstitutional. You could argue Th those 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 often can be unenforceable. It just really depends. You'll, you know, I've talked to lawyers about various platforms and they go, well, they put those in there. But look, it really comes down to a judge and the mm -hmm. judge uh, contracts don't mean much of anything they mean a lot they mean don't get me, don't get me wrong but people uh i think it's because of movies to be honest uh there is a show on netflix i don't know if you guys saw it's a what is it a black mirror episode i think where the woman's life is being broadcast on netflix okay it's a netflix show about a woman who turns on netflix and there's a show about her life oh, okay cool. and so the truman show kind of thing but like they said we use an ai that calculates your life and predicts it perfectly. And so she's watching all of her private moments broadcasting the show and everyone's God. like, it's you. She goes to her lawyer and says, how do I stop them from doing this? And they're like, this contract here is ironclad. You agree to the terms of service. Sorry. Yeah, that's not how it works. That's not how yeah. it works. If you go to someone and say, hey, let's do a deal. Uh, Phil, I'll buy that drink off you right there. What is that, a spindrift? I will give you 20 bucks for it. Sound good? All right, let me just draft this contract up that says we're going to do just that. Just sign the contract. Phil says, sure, I trust you. I'll sign the contract. Ha ha. In the contract, it, sa it says I get all the rights to his music. I own all of his music catalog. He signed it. A judge is going to laugh. Yeah. He's going to say, shut up. You did a deal for a soda, not a music catalog. Throw it in the garbage. Get out of my courtroom. Don't waste my time. Just because you signed it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So when it comes to the rules, what really matters is the expectation of both parties. Consideration provided. So that is, what did you exchange and, 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 and for what? And I believe Google's absolutely in violation across the board. It's just who wants to sue Google? Who wants to go up against a trillion dollar company or whatever it's worth? Yeah, Alphabet. It's right. even bigger. They've got like, they own, I don't know how many Alphabet, nine companies they own under their umbrella. And it's like big military tech, like really wild life extension. They're just all over the globe right now. Alphabet, a huge, huge company. When I started YouTube, it was YouTube. Google didn't own them. It was just YouTube. Steve Chen started the company and it was like, broadcast yourself. Ha ha ha, we're having fun. Look at my dog. Look at these sloths. Ha, ha. And then Google bought it and I was like, oh God, corporatization. And now Alphabet well, and now the government's involved. We know through like Edward Snowden's prism stuff. We know that the government's and with the Twitter files and all that. We know that the government's have been heavily involved, the American government with censorship on social media. So it feels just like part of the war machine at this point. I will I will add um, a possibility as to what happened. <clears throat> we I, I for the first time ever, I, I recorded a quick 30 second bit. I opened up Timcast IRL. I clicked popular showing our most popular episodes. And then I said, if you're looking for a show on culture, news, and politics, check out Timcast IRL, Monday to Friday, 8 p.m. Click the subscribe button. Come hang out. We've had great guests from, you know, Kanye to Joe Rogan. And uh, tried to keep it light. They denied it as an election ad. I appealed. They denied it. I recorded a new ad. They denied it. They said it was an election ad. They said I had to fill out some form and get a certificate as an election advertiser. And I'm like, but I'm not promoting any politicians. So I contact Google. Their staff say, you know what? You're right. This is not an election ad. We don't know what's going on. We'll get back to you. Three or so days ago, or I think it was three days ago, Monday, they get back to me and say, your ad is approved. Thank you. Those two episodes they took down were featured in that advertisement. So I wonder if a component of this is someone working Google ads sees an advertisement for their biggest live show on average, averaging the largest live audience on YouTube. And the two biggest episodes are Alex Jones. I wonder if a higher up saw that and said, delete those episodes now. I don't care how, make up a reason. Now they've got an advertisement on Google that's, I'm like, do I just blast a ridiculous amount of money at this ad? Should I make an ad on Google right now? You know, maybe I'll do that. It'll be funny because like, will they deny the advertisement? I make an ad where I say, YouTube wrongly deleted our two biggest episodes. <laughs> They'll probably deny, probably deny it because it's too, what are you, meta? Is that this? But it doesn't violate any of the rules to do that. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah.
know. Hey, here, here's YouTube. The These are the two biggest shows for three years. And after I made an ad, they deleted them. Clearly, they're scared that you, they're scared of you finding out that they had these shows. I That, hanging out with uh, Alex and Joe Rogan and everybody in the RV, that was like one of the more fun nights of my life so far. That was a really, I mean, it was just an exhilarating evening to hang with those dudes and watch cool. everyone talk. What's crazy is I that, love that show to come back on. It wasn't our most concurrent viewership, and uh, but it was our most viewership after the fact. I think it had like two point four million views uh, on YouTube. On YouTube, the Darren Beatty one, um, you can look it up. I think it's like what seven million total or something like that. It's like six point something on Rumble. It was several hundred thousand on YouTube. It was a uh, couple hundred thousand on other platforms. And by the way, yes, on Rumble dot com slash Timcast IRL, it's on Rumble. The whole yeah. channel's on Rumble right now. So make sure you subscribe to our Rumble channel, Timcast IRL, as well as our uh, X, uh, YouTube, I'm sorry, uh, X.com slash Timcast. I think it's at X. X.com slash Timcast. It's still Twitter.com, though, I think. Yeah, maybe it'll work for either Twitter.com. I think at this point, anyone, it's tough to say. I, I would encourage people to multi-stream just to do it and build followings on all. But I bless you, Tim. I understand the... Um, Thank you, Ian. Thank, oh, absolutely, sir. <laughs> My pleasure. That To focus it all into one platform, to generate massive ad revenue on that one platform does make a lot of sense at face value. But man, just having your tentacles all over the place. If you're well, starting it's, out, we, it's, if you're starting out, it's, it's, there's a temptation to like build a platform, build a, a following on a platform. And then that's where you, you feel like you're at home and you want to stay there, but it is good to, to spread out. But you, a lot of times you'll need that, that home base kind of platform to start you off. So that way you can actually like continue to, to actually have a, 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 a you know, produce a show or whatever, you know, for a lot of smaller producers, I mean. And YouTube's been so good with ad revenue. The whole partner program thing, 2008, when they introduced it, that was one of the great things about Google buying YouTube is that they introduced, they had money, big money, and they could pay people. And that was like, what the fuck? I, I'm just doing this for fun. I'm doing this to help people. I didn't expect, I, I, I'm a waiter. That was my life at the time. I, I didn't, I just wanted to help people. And then they were like, we're going to give you money. And then, man, I, I, I got nervous about that. Actually, they didn't bring me on the partner program because I was too racy. I was getting high and talking about <laughs> saying fuck shit and talking about politics and all the well, racy stuff. Yeah, welcome back, guys. It's too, it's real life. We're all in this together. And um, it was it was a shocking twist to watch people start to get paid and go. And then we made Maker Studios. I got in with Ben and Danny, and we, we conceptualized Maker Studios, and we built out this multi-channel marketing concept. And then all the YouTubers came, Phil, or... Um, you know, Phil DeFranco was there, Dave Days, Kasim G, Lisa Nova. It was awesome. We were all in Venice making stuff. It was just such a good they, time. They sold to Disney. They sold it to Disney for a billion. And but I was so high, I wasn't. I was just like, I don't give a fuck about the money, man. I was just so like dark at that time in my life. Let, let, let me tell you, um, I worked for Fusion, which was owned by Univision and uh, ABC News, so Disney. And one of the funniest things in the world was when I was talking about some collaborations that would be great to do. They mentioned, hey, aren't those people signed to Maker Studios? And I was like, yeah, I think so. And they were like, we can just, awesome, we'll, we'll do it. And I was like, cool, all right. Well, we need, like, I, let me reach out to these guys and see what we can, uh, uh, see if they're interested. And they went, well, what do you mean? They're with Maker, right? I'm like, yeah. So let me reach out to them and see if they're interested in what they need to do it. And they're like, no, 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 they're already signed to Maker. Disney owns it. And I was like, and, and they were like, so we'll just do it. And I was like, do you know what Disney bought? So there were high ups at this company that thought they bought a talent roster, which gave them signed talent under obligations, like a talent agency. And they did not realize all it did was a rev split. Yep. Yeah, and it didn't do anything. So I was like, I ended up having this conversation where I'm like, do you think that these people are signed to a talent agency we own and that they have to go through us for gigs. And they were like, what is maker? And I was like, it's a, it's a multi-channel, uh, uh, like what is it? What's it called? Multi-channel multi marketing network, MCM. Yeah. That was like what MC multi-channel network. Multi yeah. I was like, all this means that their YouTube channel is part of a multi-channel network to add, to, re to uh, generate revenue for their channels. And they were like, so we can't work with them. And I'm like, we can work with them the same as we can work with literally any person at any company, but that means we have to negotiate a rate, figure out who their manager and agent is, and their agent could say no. And they were like, we don't own their agency. And I was like, no, dude. The whole, they had no idea what they bought. The whole point of Maker in the beginning when me and Danny and Ben were talking about it in a hotel room at, at YouTube Live in 2007 in San Francisco, we were, I was like, we got to make 
a web actors guild. We'll call it WAG. I don't know. We had SAG, Screen Actors Guild for, for actors. And all these YouTubers were getting screwed because we weren't getting... It was just like I could see the whole... The people taking advantage of and I wanted to create some sort of like some sort of union and that's where that's where the impetus came from to make maker and then so everyone was just kind of poured coming in they were already wealthy they were already making stuff and we were just working together for fun I used to say I don't care about the money and I've, lately I've been thinking about this a lot I care about it I care about it I, I understand the value and the, and the usefulness of it yeah. but it's not my primary motive um, I'm fortunate that I've never been starving on the street pretty much I've lived in a car for a little bit of time but like like when I say I don't care about, I got to find a better way to phrase that. It's not my priority. The, yeah. the social capital. Nobody, nobody will invest in a guy when he's like, I don't care about the money. They're going to be like, okay, exactly, because well, they want to, they want to see some money. But like social capital is real. If you've got a hundred people that will work for you for free, that's as more valuable than a million bucks. Nowadays, you're not going to find a hundred people that are going to work for you for free. They're not in the economy that we have right now. Sincerely, this is but, this is an actual, this is an actual material thing that you're going to actually have to confront if you actually want to do something like that. And with people having such a hard time with making ends meet with the jobs that they have, the 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 value of the dollar going down so much as it has in in the past you know year or two like getting people to work for free they have to have you have to be able to support yourself as it is and you've got people that can't get houses can't start families they can't do all kinds of things that they that they want to do you hear people constantly talking about that, that they don't have the money for this can't afford this everything's gone up the prices are so much blah 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 getting people to work for free is not going to happen yeah it, so you need only an, I, would, I would suggest to. another plan. well here what you can do is. Get a bunch of exercycles and wire <laughs> them to large batteries and then offer people a free exercise program to get in shape. And what they're really doing is powering your house, oh, like it. saving your electric bill. You can also start a Actually, cryptocurrency. Uh, people did that. I don't know uh, how legal that is you anymore. You shouldn't. Yeah. I'm I'll give, you I want to give a shout out to Nathan for you. You, ever see, you. you see that episode where he's like, I've created a moving company and I've created a, a new workout program. And he got a guy who like never did this to go on TV and claim that moving is actually the most robust and all around workout. And then he goes to him and he's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm, I'm a moving company. We'll move your house and all your furniture to your new location. It'll cost you X. And you're like, okay. Then he goes to a bunch of people who want to lose weight. And he's like, it's a great workout program where you move furniture. And they're like, oh, wow. So he basically, he gets laborers for free to move someone's furniture for him. <laughs> that show is great. Uh, let's, let's jump to this story. This is actually the big news. I got to be honest. Yeah. This is from Bloomberg.com. And I just, I laughed a lot when I read the headline. Dubai grinds to standstill as cloud seeding worsens flooding. I would just like to stress the, the, the headline is effectively government weather manipulation backfires causing a uh, worsening flooding. Yeah. I don't want to say it caused it. Okay. Maybe it did. But uh, yo, look at this. Torrential rains across the UAE prompted flight cancellations for schools to shut and brought traffic to a standstill. The heavy rains that caused widespread flooding across the desert nation came after cloud seeding. <laughs> the UAE has been carrying out seeding operations since 2002 to address water security issues, even though the lack of drainage in many areas can trigger flooding. So I don't know if you guys saw all these videos that were going viral. Yeah. Insane flooding. Yeah. Apparently, just a few days before... They do this thing where they uh, spray potassium chloride into uh, updrafts, which launches salts into cloud formations, which is then it, it attracts water particles. It's a, a, you know, salt wants to absorb the water. It pulls the water in, creating a dense pocket of water that falls down as rain. I don't know if they accidentally let loose too much, but it's sparked. Look at this. It's a natural salt, which is potassium chloride. And it resulted in this mass flooding Whoa. all over, uh, all over Dubai. Oh, this is kind of so, like a good thing that not the flood, but no. the, the warning itself is a good thing. Like that we know that this can happen. That's well, a big no, deal. no, this this is this is a this is a terrible thing. And the reason this is a terrible thing is because there are people talking about using methods to affect the amount of sunlight the planet gets in order to prevent the Earth from warming anymore now first of all the idea that the earth warming is bad is is controversial in and of itself when human beings meddle with stuff like this they do not have the ability to predict the outcome which is why you have floods in dubai right so this is similar to 
the the uh, what happened with Lysenkoism in in the Soviet Union. Tosin, Tofen Lysenko was a scientist and he rejected Darwinism and th this was Soviet science. Soviets rejected Darwinism and their belief was that plants that are like each other work communally. This was an argument made because they, they were against Western science totally. And they said, you should plants, you should plant plants that are like, you know, that are of the same variety. You can plant them very close together because they will work to, as, as a one unit and they will be more prosperous. That is absolutely wrong. And it caused a famine that killed millions and millions of people. This is what happens when the when man thinks that he needs to affect nature on that grand a scale. A similar thing happened in China when you talk about the or when you hear about the sparrows. There was an argument that that Mao was making that sparrows were foreign. They were not Chinese. They were not native to China. So because they were not Chinese, they were not communist. So the communists should get rid of the of the non-communist sparrows. I know it sounds crazy, but that's the argument that he made. Um, and so that's what they did. Every time the sparrows landed, people would go and chase off the sparrows. They would kill them. They would, they would, they would, you know, just whatever, just to get them into the air and get them to go away. What ended up happening was the the fact that there were no sparrows or not enough sparrows meant that the bugs ended up yeah. creating Focus. another like a, a massive swarm of bugs that ate the crops and there was another famine these types of grandiose plans to affect like the amount of sunlight that falls on earth are doomed and they and they doom millions and millions they, of human beings. billions risk, possibly they're risky some of them are effective sometimes like geoengineering is good why would you like, want like to make like, uh, less the amazon, sunlight the amazon river basin for instance apparently the amazon rainforest was man-made Apparently, humans have worked on dirt. If you look up the I dirt under the Amazon, one check this out. Dude. <laughs> I know it's, it's the, shockingly bizarre. No, I don't believe that at all. There's oh, this, and, there's and, this and, rich but, but soil. Phil, did you know that Atlanteans were white? Yeah, there's I, this, see, it, I heard that clip on uh, the guy on Joe Rogan. Oh, God. Amazon soil. It's really white dark, supremacy. rich soil that's man-made. They find at the basin of the Amazon. Have you got? Have you guys studied this dark terra preta? Is what it's called. And apparently, it was created I, by humans. I have done no research on this. Yeah, I, I, have, I have read absolutely nothing about it. Literally and black I'm going soil. to sit here and smugly tell you he's wrong. Yeah, it's a, it's a very dark, fertile, anthropogenic <laughs> soil found in the Amazon basin. I don't know anything about this, but I don't believe I don't believe that the that the Amazon forest it was created by humans. Well, no, the they, they, what happened the was they made the dirt to fertilize the area while they were like that tens of thousands of years ago or whatever. It could have been Atlantis, could have been an ancient civilization. And then after everything passed away, the Amazon just flourished because of this soil this rich soil that they'd created right but i don't think creating soil is comparable to chemical geoengineering yeah it's a bit different yeah so washington post has a different take on it and this is interesting the headline is this technology didn't cause dubai's floods scientists say here's why no, no wait a minute. hold on there a minute this technology why did an editor who picked this up say don't put cloud seeding in the headline why not why could they not say cloud seeding? This is weird. This article may not may, may as well not exist. But that's what they're trying to say after after nearly two years worth, two years worth of rain flooded the Dubai region Tuesday. Attention quickly shifted to cloud seeding. Why didn't they put cloud seeding in the headline? It's almost like they don't want people to know they're doing this. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying that's the case. It's just a nondescript article nobody's going to read is weird. Yeah, I mean, this stuff gives me the gives me the the shivers because of things like. You know, like the, the, the remember pig the, iron, pig iron. Yeah. It's when they said we need the metal for weapons or what, what did they do? They told everybody to melt down all of their uh, tools to make weapons, but it was garbage iron that broke. Yeah. The was, iron became very brittle. Yeah. Chinese communist. Party oh, stuff. yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. I do. I do remember that. Um, I'm not familiar with the story, but I do remember that. But this is the thing that I'm concerned about is like the, this type of impulse by the powers that be or whatever uh, NGOs, big governments, whatever you want to call it, um, or whoever's involved in it, because I think that they're probably, it's not just, just governments, it's, you know, climate activists and, and there are uh, NGOs that are involved in stuff like the UN and stuff. But, but the things that are going on in, uh, in Europe about the, the farmers and the protests and, and trying to prevent the farmers from using uh, certain kinds of um, fertilizer because of carbon and stuff like that, all of those things will have massive down, downstream effects on the rest of the world. And when you, when you meddle with what actually are delicate systems, right? These, 
the 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 system that provides food for the eight billion people on Earth is because of petrochemicals. It's because of oil. Without oil, without with if we if we just say leave it in the ground like the environmentalists say they want to, that means that billions of people die. Not millions, billions. And I think that there are people that are far too quick to think that humans have everything figured out, especially nowadays with the information and technolo technological revolutions that we've had since just since the turn of this century, never mind last century, but this one, people frequently think, okay, we've solved these problems. We've got everything under control. AI is almost here. We're going to figure everything out. We can go ahead and just go ahead and do it and we'll figure it out and everything will be fine. But that is probably I wrong. Got, I got a conspiracy for you. Let's hear it. Remember global cooling? Yes, in the 70s. Yeah, they were telling people to drive as much as possible. Because were they really? They, yes. There were magazine articles about it. There's a viral video where it's a guy saying, we may face another ice age as the planet cools rapidly. Trends are showing the planet getting cold. Uh, conspiracy theory. Yeah. The government, fearing global cooling, said the people aren't producing enough carbon. So we are going to have a new ice age and it will destroy our economy. It'll destroy this country. So they created a device. That would heat the planet just a little bit to stave off global cooling. But oh no, they lost control and it overheated Jeez. and started global warming. And now they're like, oh, quick, global warming's the problem now. That explains everything. Mm, overcompensation. That's right. I understand. Now we have global warming so. and they're desperately trying to stop everybody from carbon. Film, you made you a know. great point before the show about that we're in an interglacial period still. Yeah. We're still in an ice age. We're coming out of the last, last ice age. Let's, I think people, it's confusing because the comets seem to have hit 10,000, 12,000 years ago and melted a bunch of ice. So it looks like we're kind of out of it already. But the reality is we still have ice on earth because we're in an ice age. People, people don't realize that that the ice the term ice age means that there are there is constant ice on the polar caps. The earth has gone in and out of ice ages. The fact that we have polar ice caps currently means that we are currently in an ice age we're coming out of it and that is natural there will be a point in the future when there are no ice caps on earth human beings will survive we will be able to deal with this we've you know mammals and reptiles and all sorts of land-based animals have dealt with that kind of stuff for as long as there has been life on earth human beings being the the conscious and creative and opposable thumb having uh machines that we meet machines that we are uh we'll figure this out too it's not the end of the world and it really does boil down to governments are just trying to use the the climate as an excuse to control the populations populations of the, let me the let countries. me let me play this clip this is from uh damn that's interesting on reddit and it's a clip from 1978 warning of an impending ice age check check this one out at least eight times in the past million years, it has advanced and retreated with clockwork regularity. If we are unprepared for the next advance, the result could be hunger and death on a scale unprecedented in all of history. What scientists are telling us now is that the threat of an ice age is not as remote as they once thought. During the lifetime of our grandchildren, Arctic cold and perpetual snow could turn most of the inhabitable portions of our planet into a polar desert. Wow. Yeah. In 1977, the worst winter in a century struck the United States. Arctic cold gripped the Midwest for weeks on end. Great blizzards paralyzed cities of the Northeast. One desperate night in Buffalo, eight people froze to death in marooned cars. Pat Bushnell was on the road that night. Traffic just absolutely stopped. I was afraid of being stuck in the car all night long with the uh, cold and the wind running out of gas. And then what? I think that if we had to go through a real bad winter, just like we just went through, I think we'd have to think about moving someplace else. Move where? The brutal buffalo winter might become common all over the United States. Climate experts believe the next ice age is on its way. According to recent evidence, it could come sooner than anyone had expected. Ooh, scary music. And this is in my lifetime. And weather stations in the you know, north, like I was temperatures two, have been but still. For 30 years. Sea coasts long free of summer ice are now blocked year round. <laughs> According to some climatologists, 
within a lifetime, we might be living in the next ice age. Of the nine planets in our solar system, only Earth has conditions favorable to human life. So, uh, imagine if in 1978 when they made this video, governments of the world decided to enact a global geoengineering project to prevent global cooling. Imagine the catastrophe. Now that they believe it's global warming and the sea levels will rise, imagine they were like, okay, we're going to, you know, enact all these policies. We are going to create these devices, these chemicals that will make the planet warmer. And then 20 years later, they're like, uh oh. The planet's actually warming, and oh, the ice was wrong. They might have done that. They might have. Well, I'm not saying they that. did. I'm saying that's interesting. If it is true that climate change is is happening and the planet's getting warmer, imagine if in 1978 they actually tried to heat up the planet out of fear of an ice age. This is the problem with humans thinking they're smart yeah. enough to control everything. And also, I'm reading exactly. about we're in an, we're in what's called the Quaternary Ice Age, which started around 2.6 million years ago. So this whole thing, they were already in an ice age. That entire show that they were just doing when they were like we may enter another I you, you were in you smart humans didn't know you were in an ice age when you were making that video that's the stupidity oh of dude when we were kids they thought dinosaurs were lizards <laughs> now they're birds yeah so maybe they they're not even birds maybe they're mushrooms who knows yes <laughs> <laughs> Your face. bro I, I was just thinking i i had a vision a couple nights ago about something about something about you were sparking some memory about what i think what we think something is that it's not anyway I'll, it'll come back to me no i don't think dinosaurs are mushrooms that's not why i said that but they have feathers apparently they had feathers yeah. that's freaking yeah. cool yeah they're birds yeah that's awesome. that's why chickens look like little dinosaurs that was one of walking my, around it was walking. one of my favorite and moments on IRL. And you, were, <laughs> you almost saw a memory like my yeah. mind was my neural pathways were reforming <laughs> and in that, that moment great. Ian shattered through the veil and saw the truth of the universe. Oh, if I was on DMT. Dinosaurs yeah. were mushrooms. Yeah, we would have known. <laughs> I think that mushroom, you know my theory about mushrooms, about fungus. I think what happened was we got a planet. It's twisting open. You've got hydrogen, oxygen, making all this water. Panspermia. You get all these spores just splash into earth. So we've got these spores in our tide pools. The spores that start eating the vegetable matter become mushroom, become fungus. The spores that start eating other spores become animal. And that's where we came from. Well, where did those come from? Space. Well, yeah, but that's just pushing it back. Yeah, that's where, a cop out. Yeah, I like the way you think, Phil. <laughs> well, Phil, um, what happened was there was a volcanic eruption, and in this charged uh, particulate burst, it made contact with water, and then these uh, chemical comp compounds began to merge, forming proteins that began to self-replicate. Yeah, the formation of amoebas are fascinating because it's like a single cell that joins with another single cell and they work together to get the food to come in between the two of them. And then the other cells will come up around and become kind of like, they'll curl in so the food doesn't fall out. And you see like six cells working together to capture food that they can all share. And then it becomes a, an organism. And you're like, oh, that's a thing now. And we see a six-celled organism. Mm. Pretty cool how that That's works. That's a pretty good theory. And the way that fu fungus, evolutionary biologists would, would be able to tell you specifically where they think, how they think fungus evolved from like the tide pool. I'm not the you guy. You know, the funny thing is the next evolution, of course, is going to be these gigantic, creepy robots. Oh, dude. It's kind of awesome though. You pull it, you got that video of the Boston Dynamic, the new I one. I kind of wanted to save that one for its own segment. Man, creepy as hell. One. You tweeted it out like. Well, hold be... on. Before, okay. So before we move on to that, like I want to, I want to at least make the point, like they've been talking about like global warming and stuff. And for as long, for a long, long time, the, 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 the coastlines have not changed, right? There's been, there, ha there is significantly less ice on the North Pole than there was 20, 30 years ago, but the coastlines have not changed. But what about, you know, the Sphinx? <laughs> Wasn't yeah. that underwater? It, it looks it like was. It. It, it was. Was it? it? Apparently, there was water involved in, in the erosion. There's lots of erosion huh. on the sides. Yeah. I don't know if it was heavy rainfall or if it was actually submerged. And I think that it actually it was like eroded Yo. and then they built up to Wait fix a it and stuff too. I'm not if, sure. You know, you guys know what expanding Earth theory is? Yeah. There's a cool video we could pull up what if, too. Hold on. What if the Earth is expanding? Because if it does, that means the water levels will go down. Oh. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, that proves it. If it's, unless it's, it does. That's prove it. actually, <laughs> that's possible. Um, I don't know that. Unless it's making more water as it expands open, but I think you might be, you might have an interesting. So let's point. say you've got, so I don't, I don't know that I, 
this is true. I think this is just like fringe internet stuff. But the idea is that tectonic plates yeah. aren't actually going under and over and overlapping and spinning around. It's that they're overlapping and un unfolding. And so the earth is actually getting bigger. So imagine you've got, you know, a ball and around it is an inch of water in every direction. If the ball gets bigger, the water will spread thinner and thinner to cover the mass. So if the earth was more compressed 4,000 years ago and has been expanding, mm. the water would be going down because it would less and less water to cover the surface of the expanding ball. Whatever keeps Barack Obama's house dry is the is the theory that we it's, should go it's with. It's possible that there is more hydrogen coming out as it expands to make more water. So it might be there might be a homeostasis with it. But the concern with the the global the, with the ice caps melting and the the sea levels rising is that what there's um there's a word for it the 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 ice is pressing down on on the poles. It's pressing down on Antarctica. So if that ice is abruptly removed and Antarctica lifts up because there's no more weight on top of it, Earth elsewhere will dip down. It will sink. So like that's they think what happened to Atlantis is that because all those ice caps dress just abruptly changed atlanta sunk down as well as got hit by a flood um but if it's not abrupt then i the don't think punch. yeah if it doesn't happen all abrupt like just a, in a day or three days or something then there, it, it might be a really slow you might be able to there's a know, funny viral video who, who was it on joe rogan was it graham hancock today yeah, or, or while well, the clip was circulating today I believe yeah it was graham and hancock. who else was on that show basically the other guy was saying that these ideas are rooted in white supremacy yeah. because they believe that Atlantis was a bunch of white people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that I was, was like, well, that was a cool. Did you watch the whole show? I didn't get a no. chance to see it. I mean, look, I don't know about how, I don't, I'm not a guy that studies the the Atlantis stuff, but I don't imagine that Atlantis has, you know, had uh I don't know. I don't I don't imagine that Atlantis was actually real to be honest with you. But that being said, the it, whoever comes up with a story or whatever culture is is creating the story because i think that it is a myth so so whoever's writing the myth they're going to make the the inhabitants like them especially thousand years ago or whenever the 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 story of atlantis first became you know started circulating or whatever well they, so people it, it, people just imagine themselves people project yeah so exactly. it's it's like it's ridiculous to call it racist or white supremacist mm -hmm. because Someone is sitting around a room full of white dudes and then is imagining another like a, a person 100 years ago and they imagine a white dude. It's like, peop you know, there's there's pictures of Jesus in different cultures and there's like there's like Japanese Jesus. There's yeah. black Jesus, Arabic Jesus and all that stuff. I think the I think the swarthy uh, Jesus, the Atlanteans had Neanderthals in prison. The last Neanderthals on Earth were in prison in the capital and they all died in the flood. That's in my script that I'm writing anyway. That's in my in my it's awesome movie that is going to be produced. Going to be one of the greatest movies of Atlantis ever made, called I The Lost it. City of Atlantis. I love it. Big budget. The guy that um, was debating Graham Hancock's name is Flint Dibble. There you go. And that's the guy that wrote an article and kind of in, I don't want to speak out of turn, but they're saying that he was uh, drag associating. that man, drag that man. Because he, he was, was like he, he was, was trying my quote to call out of all context. that dude racist. Yeah, he he made a thing. It was like Graham Hancock's stuff lead is is he's yeah. he's citing sources that are racist, and he and then he was and then he was like associating Graham with racist. Drag that person. man. And Graham was like, "You're making me look bad. You're associating me with things." Like, no, that's not what I meant to do. I, I'm out of context. It was a pretty cool episode. Well, let's let's jump to this uh, this video we have from Boston Dynamics. Lex Fridman uh, posted this. I'd like to play for you your dystopian apocalyptic nightmare clip starting now. Oh man! It's oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> you saw its legs turn yes. around. It's so Look. creepy. It's it's standing backwards. Its head and legs spin around. <laughs> wow, dude! I mean, I get the point of that is to show the articulation, how it's capable of moving in a in a great in a way that is more it's more mobile than a human being. But still, it, there's a whole lot of man. That's the exorcist kind of movement that you look at. And you're I'd, just like, when is she going to go ahead and climb on the ceiling? I'd like to contrast the two worldviews here. Lex Redman says. Congrats to Boston Dynamics on their new electric version of Atlas Robot. Thanks to all the amazing engineering teams at Boston Dynamics, Tesla, and others pushing the field of robotics forward. I can't wait to hang out with Atlas and Optimus together at some point, robot party. To which I responded, I can't wait to fight these things as my friends scavenge a rundown gas station for food and I attempt to buy them time before we flee into the sewers. I, my thought when I saw that was, they will also be in the sewers and they can see in the dark. 
<laughs> so, yes, they will be. Uh, so night vision is and they can, a like, great technology. Up. Yeah, they can turn into a little you, box. You'll kick it. You'll be walking in the water and accidentally kick the thing. I mean, how what much does that, that look oh, like dude, imagine stuff from iRobot? Imagine you're in the sewer with your buddies and you have, like, a backpack and you're, like, armed. You've got limited provisions and you're like, we need to make it through because the robots find us, they'll kill us. And then you stub your toe and you look down and there's a box and you go... Oh my God. And then it starts curling, curling up and shifting around and his arms are folding oh. and his head spins around and then it, and, and then it goes like, oh. human detected. God, it looks like T-1000. Protocol. Yeah, it feels yeah. like the Terminator from T-1000. I mean, so here's, here's an honest question though. Like, why would anyone assume these things would not become dangerous? Well, if, if you can create uh, an intelligence and if people that create the intelligence decide that they're going to give it motivations, which is stuff that people that are working on AI are going to do because that's the, that is what is happening here. Like we're watching, not only are we watching robotics come to a a place where it can mimic human form. We're also trying to mimic human intelligence and they're going to be combined without question in 50 years. There are going to be artificial intelligent humanoids walking around in society. Like that's going to be very normal. In There's going to be, well, <clears throat> normally I'd say this, you would think there would be some kind of, flag they would require like any artificial human humanoid robot is required to wear something or have a mark so you know it's not a real person but based on how the internet evolved that won't happen yeah. we're we are legislatively paralyzed so the internet for example uh on on x for instance even with elon musk doing a great job as he does of getting rid of predators you still have hardcore adult content on x and 13 year olds are allowed on there that, that's insane that should not be allowed there should be age verification they should block those hardcore channels so that you can't watch this stuff. That says to me, they are going to make AI humanoid robots. They've already got rud like rudimentary ones that are clearly not people. You watch the videos and they, they're, they're looking better and better, but they move stiff and they're like, hello, Phil, it's great to see you. And you're like, okay, the voice is getting better. We saw that one video where the robot stuttered. They add a yeah. fake AI God. stutter voice. To make it more human seeming. Right. And so what's going to happen is there will be no regulation. You'll be walking down the street one day and there'll just be some guy and he'll be like, how's it going? You'll be like, hey, what's up? You won't even realize it was a robot. Robot the whole time. It's going to be data from Star Trek. No. Next generation. Like sort of. But one of the first, the, the funny thing about data from Star Trek the Next Generation is he was, he had no emotions and he struggled to act human. He was trying to learn how to be human. The first thing they're doing is creating the personalities. Yeah. Do you think that they'll work out these 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 robots just to seem more human? Because they don't need to work out. But do you no. think you'll see one running no. on a trail no. and be no, like, hello, sir? No. They don't regenerate what you, with the way we do. So that would just limit their lifespans. So yeah. you'll know if you see a guy running down a trail and he says, hey, to you that it's not a robot. Unless the Maybe. goal, unless it's a spy robot intended to infiltrate. Yeah. You know, these places. Uh, I mean, we're literally but, like just a skin suit away from the first gen Terminators that they talked about in the movie. But they, then you could see them because they, their skin was latex. I you know? think uh, I don't think they're going to build these things for any functional work purpose first. I think it'll be uh, sex bots because, look, I can hire someone at minimum wage or I can spend how much money on one of these robots to lift boxes. Wow. You got like a. Thirty thousand dollar robot that just cleaned your house and you could have and you had sex with you. That would be. <laughs> I didn't mean you personally, but I'm just saying in general. The rhetorical if, you. If someone could do it, they'd go get grocery. Maybe the maybe leaving the house is a little extreme for a so, robot at this point. No, they're gonna. You, when, so this is the issue, actually. Actually, fair point. I was wrong. If the cost of if the cost how how much do these robots cost? I'm not sure the cost, but I'm, I imagine that they're going to be looking to be to. It's got to be what millions? Maybe now, but I mean the. <laughs> I don't know because the, the I don't know what the technology is like, but really it's like you're talking about electric motors and servo. So I don't know how involved it is. And I'm, I'm speaking definitely as a very ignorant person about this, but the technology is really in in the, the software, software and it's not in the servos and et cetera, like the the actual motors and stuff like that. There, It's not super crazy far out technology to do it. What's the if, important part is the the balance and the, and the, the software. So. If, if it costs thirty thousand dollars for one of these robots mcdonald's replaces their staff yeah in two seconds because they're going to say over the course of three years we are going to pay any minimum wage employee you know forty thousand dollars these robots last five years and they cost thirty thousand dollars up front done and they don't yeah. get burnt 
and they don't come and call in sick they're just and there. they can't but the, and they're not going to go to hr and they're not going to i mean yeah. just you know it's they're, like they can double security at your n- well, no your building. You, you, they, you don't they, need they, security. you don't want to do that because what do you why would you steal any why would you worry because you've got all robots inside you order at a kiosk the robots make it and hand it to you what are you gonna what's secure what do you have to worry about security because everyone's paying with their credit card or like whatever there won't even be there's, cash in the there's restaurant. no reason yeah it's like so let the let someone come in and break something whatever you've got insurance there's it takes all of the all the the concerns of safety go away aside from aside from safety for your customers obviously you want to make sure that the people that are the people that are coming to get food from there are safe but otherwise like internally for your business and stuff all of the all the the worries about osha and stuff like the out of here like that who cares you know <laughs> like there's a ton of stuff that there's a ton of things that that make it more appealing this is it's, exactly what the automotive industries did it's just that the automotive industry has big gigantic robots that have arms and stuff like that if if the automotive industry can have th- have these and just give them existing power tools and they can do what the what the big you know what what your average person is doing on the on the the line you, but, you're talking dude, about wiping out entire industries have you for, guys so, for jobs have you guys seen the uh they have so there was an article in the new york post about a guy who spends ten thousand dollars a month on ai girlfriends no god yeah no. because you know there was that there was that one company where people were using it for you know titillation and so they banned it and they were like stop and then all of a sudden everyone revolted and said, but my waifu. Eh. <laughs> so they said, okay, grandfathered in, but from now on, no more of this weird, creepy, you know, titillating content. So these other companies emerged and they were like, well, let you do it. <laughs> they will, they even ate. So a lot of people are wondering where these like AI porn images came from that popped up all over Twitter. There are services that allow you to generate your own girlfriend. Like you can customize mm-hmm. it and everything. And then you pay a subscription. They allow you to generate overt wow. adult content of AI women. Guys are paying for it. I was thinking the next era of Luddites, it's not going to be factory workers. It's not, or it's not going to be trades. It's going to be sex workers. There's going to be a bunch of, hmm. yeah. Musicians too, maybe. Cause I was thinking in the shower earlier, like, geez, I, it, it, yeah. Making music. It's like, it's not about the finished product. Making music is actually about making the music. It's about banging on a drum with your buddy and like making some sounds. Well, together. maybe when we, when we played the AI songs, when Harmeet was here, she was just dismissive saying, oh, this is stupid. It's boring. It's bad. And I think the issue for a lot of people is they assume all music is Zeppelin or The Weeknd or Taylor Swift or something like well-crafted songs when I would probably estimate, I don't know, Phil probably knows better, but I'd say like 70% of music is background instrumental stuff for yeah. jingles, for movies, yeah. for uh, like most people don't realize that when you're watching a movie, there's really subtle background music the whole time almost the entire time in films. And there's a guy who writes all that music. So you go online, you can AI generate all of that now. That's going to eliminate a large portion of money in the music industry. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm down to talk more about sex work, actually. Oh, <laughs> before we go into sex work, the Boston Dynamic Robot, Jeez, I, got a, I got a price tag. The uh, the Spot Robot Dog is $74,500. Yeah. What about the guy? I haven't seen one for the guy. And by the way, I'm on Brave. The guy it's AI Brave. answering my search queries. It's got AI answering, AI yeah. generating answer. It's not a... Uh, I want to know how much this robot guy costs. I, oh. I mean, this is... And still, then he's probably... Th- this is probably like prototypes. They're probably like 20 or so of those that they've got how, made now. So. Yeah. How amazing would it be to get one of those? get a like a realistic silicon Seamus mask <laughs> put over its head and then attach it to chat gpt real-time voice with Seamus's voice and we just Seamus could never leave us that's right he would leave but we always have a <laughs> great <laughs> you, you, you could have an ai that knows everything there is to know about potatoes yeah do you think you'd ever buy one of those boston dynamic dogs do you buy them now have, can't you have, yeah it's 75 oh you're grand. saying just to I have I a wouldn't. patrol in the studio or something freak people out people would lose their shit <laughs> actually so i mean i gotta be honest it's a really great thing to have because they they walk into their own charger i'm pretty sure and they sit is that, is that what they do right they I like no yeah once you the battery could, gets low they walk to their charger and then charge the new place it might not be a, not a bad idea to have one on patrol teach it to scale well because think about this um the biggest issue we have is information when it comes to security so with all the buildings we've got the reason we have security is because if someone comes around who shouldn't be, we need to know what's happening. Yep. Then we call backup. Now, a human being can also be armed in West Virginia. So we got a handful wait. of those guys. Ain't nobody coming around. But 
$74,000 for one robo dog costs way more for security. Yeah. It, I don't know how secure it, it, it's more of a scout, I think, at this exactly. point. Exactly. And so you can reduce mm-hmm. the amount of security guards you have, have a couple guys who are armed, and have a couple robo dogs, you cut your costs down. Just built in night vision. Because the robo dogs can do the patrolling all night long. And then alert the uh, security team to any. Mm-hmm. And also scare off wildlife and stuff. Yeah. You can also have uh, a thermal on a robot dog. The, yep. the thermal vision as opposed to night vision. It's actually better if you're looking to identify living things. What I was actually planning on doing was building fake auto defense turrets for Free Domestan. <laughs> It'd be so cool. So you would just see these like two big things moving back and forth with lasers pointing. Yeah. And, you know, they wouldn't actually have any capability to do anything other than look intimidating. Just follow the, someone if they got and, emotion. <laughs> and what it would actually be is, you know, the sprinklers that go. We would just put a big cylinder on it. So it would look like it's patrolling, That's but it's awesome. actually just a sprinkler. That's funny. And then people would be like, I'm not going anywhere near that thing. I don't know what that is. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. Yeah, it's freaky. You know, I was talking about this earlier. In West Virginia, we've had weirdos come out of the property, mm-hmm. assuming nobody's there. We had that incident that happened, I think it was last year, when some guys broke into one of the buildings and uh, one of our security guys opened fire on them. You should buy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, like, you. but this is the price of freedom. Yeah. Uh, do you, like, look, we, we, we're out in the middle of nowhere and there's crime. You go to New York, there's crime. In New York, you have no freedom and there's crime. In West Virginia, there's crime and you have freedom. So you can defend yourself. You should get a lot of gun, uh, gun safe for in the studio. And so I can bring a gun to leave there when I'm not there. <laughs> it's in but the safe, locked up. Constitutional carry state. Yeah. You know, but uh, awesome. anyway, robots. Um, <clears throat> robot sex dogs. <laughs> what? Robot, what? Wait, what? I didn't know those words. I didn't mean to say them at the same time. <laughs> But now I'm thinking about it. Clip it. Uh oh. <laughs> it, it brings a whole new meaning to the word doggy style, if you know what I'm talking about. No. Uh, no. Down Vosh. Down. Dude. <laughs> wow. That's coming up on the horizon, and I did not mean to manifest that. Oh, God. So, <laughs> with, um, I mean, we talked about this before. There's already a mod for, I think it's Skyrim, where you can talk to an AI companion. And it uses GPT to answer your questions and talk to you. Now with these AI girlfriends, they've like, this is the first thing they're putting money in because they know guys will spend money on it. Look, you build a robot that can carry boxes. Yeah. Amazon will go, through, go to their insurance company. They'll talk about liability. They'll talk about rates. They make the AI porn and the guys, they're buying it up. I imagine like this, the, the robots like this, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be home appliances. You know, you're going to have a robot around to do menial tasks. You've already got Alexa that goes and turns people's lights in mine, in, in my apartment at the uh, down here, the, the apartment, I have Alexa and it's handy. When I go home, I don't, I don't have that stuff in my place in New Hampshire. So when I go home, I, I can't even wait. The chat is putting twenties for what Ian just said. Uh, Cause you know, I'm right. That's so funny. See, this is free. Associate. This is what the show would be every night. If we didn't have to censor ourselves. Let's be free together. <laughs> I'm telling we, you. We didn't have a sense of that. I you said really, it on the show. Yeah, dog. Now you're home. I, wh- are what next, guys? Yeah. I agree. That was a 20 <laughs> all the way. I don't talk to the YouTube chat very much. But are, is, are you talking about the, the IRL chat? Or what about the sex talk? Discord yeah. chat? Are you talking about the IRL? IRL. Oh, okay. They were saying Ian King, ha, 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 20, 20, I 20. Good Lord. Listen, <laughs> don't encourage me. Okay, no more. I love you. Thank you for the chat. Keep it coming. I think it's important that we coin the term now. It already exists, but... (laughs) Robot sex dogs. Robosexuals. Robosexuals. Dude, would it be... The guys who have AI girlfriends are robosexuals. Would it be rape if you had sex with a robot, but it didn't tell you it was a robot? Would the robot have raped you? Wait, what? If the robot didn't disclose it was a robot before it had sex with you, would that be considered rape? I don't think inanimate objects have intent. Hmm. It would be the owner of it, actually. Oh, that's weird. This, this, this is actually a question we haven't we haven't actually uh, uh, answered, and the Supreme Court's gonna have to take it up. You're driving, a, you're in a self driving car. Let's say we're at the point where we have those self driving taxis, right? You're sitting in the back seat, and you're on your phone, boop boop boop, and an old lady steps out from between two cars, and she sees the car, and she goes Wah! and then the self driving taxi has to make a decision: hit the old lady, swerve out of the way, crash, killing the passenger. What does it do? Who does it prioritize? We don't know. A human would react instinctively and swerve probably and put their passengers at risk. We don't know. But a person has to program the vehicle to do it. So the next question is, if a self-driving taxi has nobody and it's driving around and it hits somebody, injuring them, who's at fault? 
the the terrible thing is that there's no criminal charge at all because it's a corporation. It would be a fine and a lawsuit. But if a human being is driving that car, that human being is responsible. It's a scary prospect. So if somebody makes a robot like Boston Dynamics Atlas robot, what happens if one of their robots goes rogue and starts raping people? I, Boston Dynamics is on the hook for that. I, it's got to be. Are they, though? They Who, who, who owns the robot? First, you got to catch the robot and no, no, interrogate the, look, the thing. The self get, it, get its no, no. code and be like, the why self, is it doing this? The self-driving taxis are, are sold to another company, right? So the person driving, someone buys a Toyota and crashes it. Toyota's not at fault. You could sue Toyota maybe depending on what happened, but typically it's the driver of the car. And we say, you were driving a car and you crashed the car. Now there's no driver who's at fault. The company who made the self-driving car or the company that bought the self-driving car and pressed go. Right. Because someone could buy the dynamic robot and change its code. Potentially. I don't know if that's actually feasible. Or, or not even. They buy it and they say, I want this robot to uh, provide companionship. But then it goes... Roger that. Yeah. And then Look, you're like, man, no. Everybody talks no, about... No everybody knows that these things are going to be Wi-Fi. Someone's going to hack it. And then yeah. you're just going to control it like it's a drone, man. And it's going to have a built-in camera that's going to be transmitting your sex oh, life I, I mean, to someone. Well, I, I'm not, I, I kind of moved away from the sex part oh, once really? I said you take over it. Like, like He just wants to keep going back. Dude, he, it's the darkest. Got, like, it's probably the biggest driver of humanity is sex. Like, like, it is the porn. I think they say that porn is responsible for the success of the internet in a lot that of ways. Would, porn, is, porn is responsible it's, it's, for the VHS over Betamax. And it's also why the internet speeds ramped up is because there was massive yeah. demand to, for the, the main video demand was, you know, graphic Porny. content. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, with these AI girlfriends, the chat communications and video development, it's like the, the big. Okay. You have chat GPT. Like, I signed up. How much does that cost? It's like cheap. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? You like ask it questions and it's like, eh, fine, whatever. But the AI girlfriends are a billion dollar industry. Yeah. Guys are dumping money on this stuff. The monetary drive for the advance of this technology is because simp guys want to bang robots. They're robosexuals. Look, I mean, as I think that's important. We say that too. I think we call them robosexual. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Yeah. The, the, there is going to be a demand for that clearly because you hear, you hear you know all the the red pill dudes actually it's, it's probably less the red pill dudes more the the people that listen to the red pill dudes but they're they complain about the fact that women are are their standards are too high etc cetera, etc cetera. and their women complain about men and and the sexes have never been more at each other's throats and there are dudes that are like i'm checking out of of society or checking out of the dating market and stuff there's a, a huge percentage of young guys that are you know 18 19 20 years old that have never had a girlfriend that have never been on a date there's all kinds of women that are like, oh, I can't find a guy. People are going, when you can customize something like a robot or a, an AI to give you what you're looking for, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to gravitate to that. Now I'm wondering about women with their AI robot men. They, like they a, do woman, this, yeah. a woman wants to feel safe. If there's a robot, I will protect you. And he's got laser turrets on his arms. And you're like, no one's going to mess with me and my kid. And he's also able to inseminate you and give you kids with your genetic desires or whatever the hell. Well, he's, I mean, he's going back still, to it. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, would a woman really, take that as a, hus a robot husband? Like, yeah. better than any of these simp dudes. Like, this guy didn't even work out. This robot can lift 7,000 pounds. He's, like, well, he's here, got here, the horn tonight. <laughs> here's, the, here's the issue, right? Guys... Uh, not every guy, but a lot of guys like to be domineering. They like to dominate. Uh, I wonder if, if if women do. So I was reading this thing about the success of strip clubs. Why is it that strip clubs are almost always women? There are, you know, clubs where guys strip, but they're rare. And I think this might have been like OK Cupid data. They said men like watching women in submissive positions. Women don't like seeing men to 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 women on average submissive men are not attractive they want strong co commanding men so to see a guy on stage serving you is a weak position it's it's more of a a funny thing to watch and less of a you know like like attractive whereas for guys they just see the woman woman's body and they're like yeah dance right so i wonder how that will translate to robots you say on stage, like uh, the women don't want to see a guy as a servant. So you're thinking right. they, they don't want a servant robot. They want a, a robot that's going to take charge and like, guys, be like, we're going to the park today. Guys, <laughs> I, may, I maybe, I don't know. Like, guys are going to buy these. So look, with, with these websites, I think it's called, um, what was it called? I can't remember what the name of the website was. It was at New, New York Post had the story. 
But uh, it's like you could you you pick the kind of girl you want. It's like the kind of hair, the size of the, the funny thing is like all of the AI girls that have been generated have massive knockers. <laughs> and it, it's just like just like ridiculously obscene, not real. I don't, I don't think we got that. Yeah. So like on the, on the New York Post, they showed a bunch of pictures of, of demo women and their boobs are just like. Like those women would be in serious pain. Yeah. They would need they're, surgery. They're backbreakers. Yeah. And then like you, I, I pulled up the website for the show. Here's the creepiest thing of it. When you when you click create, it gives you two options: real or anime. <laughs> I don't I don't get that. That's the weirdest thing to me. Like what? Wow. I don't. Get Dudes it want anime waifus, and I don't, I'm like, why not any other kind of fictional person? Why is it anime? That's just so weird. That's it. It's that something the, about weebs, I guess. Yeah. What's a weeb? Like an weeb. like an anime dork. Dudes that like. Uh, I'm like, dude, I like anime, Japanese but that I don't get. Like I guess this is the depopulation of humanity. Like, it's it's a self-selecting system where people are choosing to have virtual relationships and then just until it's they're easy. dead, and because it's easy. And then it's it also works for if there really is an agenda, a global agenda, where like there are too many people, you guys, we can't keep exponentially growing at this rate with this technology jeez man and so just kind of you, you look you look at this stuff these ai girlfriend stuff and it's like they will say whatever you want them to say you program their personalities what they look like they can generate graphic images and then imagine a guy grows up on that stuff and then he meets a woman in real life and she's like hey i'm not into that like we have to have boundaries whoa boundaries robo girlfriend has no boundaries she does whatever i tell her to do there's just like it's going to shatter brains. It's yep. going to break people. The the changes that have happened in the past 25 years, I mean, obviously, I mean, even even Ted Kaczynski's, uh, you know, the manifesto, he acknowledged all of the changes that had happened just in the previous 100 years since the, the or 150 years since the Industrial Revolution. Humanity has had all of the things that have had social pressures and and evolutionary pressures all of that stuff has been removed because we have machines to do our work we have machines to protect us we have machines and technology to inform us and stuff all of the things all of the connection to to actual nature and stuff all that stuff's been removed and now with machines becoming so like i mean if you thought machines were you know, common when you had toasters and cars and forklifts, like when people are going to have, you know, when people have Neuralink and uh, personal robots, nowadays, personal robots, like you have a robot that, that, you know, sweeps your house or some people do, you can buy, you know, so we, robots like this. We used to have the Roombas, yeah. but they suck. Well, yeah, they, they're small and they're a pain in the butt. They're not as good as the big ones, but that guy's going to be able to grab the Dyson that you bought and do the Dyson for you. And that Dyson works like mad. And, and he can great. probably fold up into a little cube and yeah. then s sit himself in the corner. So he, Those, he'll sit right next to the Dyson. He'll get up, pick up the Dyson, actually do a good job terrifying. cleaning. Or they'll make these, have you seen these amorphous robots? They're like, uh, they can change form. They can go through tubes and stuff. They're like, uh, look like a goo kind yeah, of. Yeah, ro robots that could clean your floor real easy. Well, I mean, maybe, but robots aren't going to be like robot isn't going to be one kind. It's not going to be just the humanoid thing. I mean, nowadays, everyone think nowadays you can actually think of, you know, Tim's car is a robot because it's got, you know, it's a Tesla that can do all kinds of stuff that other cars yeah, they, can't do. They, you know, you know I, I, I require, I require this of Elon to add a voice <laughs> assistant for Teslas. Like, oh, awesome. How, how am I not at the point where there is not like a red bar that, you know, Talks. moves up and down. Hello, and says, Michael. Hello, Tim. Where would you like to go today? And they'd be like, uh, we're going to the casino. Hollywood it is. And then it just goes, touch driving. Yeah, that's a good idea. Why also, not? Elon, make pr the, the headlights also double as projector screen so you can project a movie onto like the back of your garage while you're chilling and watch. Al also, or Elon, or something. East, Elon, make me a sandwich. Yeah, too. Elon, get over here. <laughs> this is, it's it's go time. After brother. you colonize Mars, we require yeah, more of you. Exactly. He's, he's do doing it. more make, than most people to. We'll, we'll build an electrostatic slingshot to get things into Martian orbit. He actually is making more Elons. He's so he's got oh, like, yeah. seven kids or something like that. Oh, oh yeah, you we're here. Were you going to say, talk about Andrew Tate? I was, no, I was okay, going to talk about space about? slingshots. So, I think Tate this said, let's talk about slingshots. I'd rather talk about space slingshots. Have you seen those things where it's like a big, uh, it's a big disc and there's like a hammer in it that spins around really fast and then shoots the thing straight yeah, to the sky? spin launch. Yeah. That's, that's cool. the company. And that's earth to orbit. But what you can, and then when, once it's, you got something in orbit, you can send it through like a mag rail that just fires it off into another orbit that catches it in like a reverse mag lev. 
magnet, and so you can really like shoot packages. Have they, have they done that yet already? I don't think so. No, it's a big thing. It spins really, really fast. Oh, spin then... launch. Yeah, it's up and active. You can't really send organic like humans up because of the pressure will kill right. them. But you can yeah. send. I wonder how Machinery spin launch is doing. Yeah, That's man. A cool concept. Spinning and throwing that. We're going to go to Super Chat. So if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, head over to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member um, because it doesn't look like YouTube likes us very much. And uh, it'll be interesting to see with uh, see what happens moving forward. But of course, the premise of this episode is three years after uh, our biggest episodes aired, they made up reasons to take them down and they won't give us assurances. They put a warning on the channel. And I'll stress this again, because I told them, I was like, look, if you got a problem with the episodes three years later, tell me you're taking them down. Fine. Instead, you, you issued a warning on the channel, which is effectively a strike. So it's a four strike system. Here's how it works. The first violation, we warn you. The second violation, you get a seven day suspension from broadcast. The, the, the third strike, the official second strike after the, after the warning, I believe is two weeks. And the third is a permanent ban. Permanent ban. So if they were like, look, it's been three years. I know this has been sitting on the channel for a long time. We're just going to take them off, off the channel. I would, have been, I would have been offended and angry. And I would have said, whatever. There's no threat to us being banned when they say something like that. But to come to me and say, not only that, not only will we retroactively ban your show, we'll delete you permanently if we find any, anything in any clip you've ever done over the past four years and your thousand plus episodes. So I'm like, I got to, so I have to delete every episode. We would have to literally just go in and purge the entire channel because we have no idea when they will decide to retroactively ban us. And th th there you go. Anyway, we've got plans. We've got plans. I can't say too much. A lot of people are like, why are you still on YouTube? Blah, blah, blah. We do post all our clips on Rumble. There is uh, uh, projects, the stuff behind the scenes going on that were it not for third parties involvement in their interests, I would gladly tell you. But again, I'll respect other people's privacy in that regard. We'll read your super chats. Uh, go become a member at TimCast.com. We'll have the Uncensored show coming up. It'll be fun. All right. 1596. 1596.48. Centile says, Time for TimCast brought to you by Rumble. Love you guys. Hate Google and YouTube. Well, there is a lot going on behind the scenes. I have spoken with top men. We'll see. Ted Diorio says, Not today, Clint. Maradi <laughs> says, Did I really beat Clint? Yeah. You both did. Clint. Amazing. All right. Colby Hansen says, for Phil, Donut Operator has new t-shirts that says the left lane is for crime. Donut's a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Uh, Shadow's Hand says, Warhammer 40K is now woke. They yeah. took male factions that were that way for over 30 years and added women for no reason. And then gaslighted the fans into saying they were always there. Get woke. <laughs> really? Carl did a video on it. Uh, Sargon of Akkad. Actually, under the uh, the Sargon of Akkad uh page on youtube he did a video on for on 40k and it is a shame it had 40k seemed like one of the only properties that was doing really good at keeping woke out and the reason is because it literally is about space fascists it's about like everybody's evil in the whole in like 40k world so you know have you it, played it before no no i'm just familiar i'm from i'm not well versed but i'm familiar with the lore so Kinsei Sensei says, if they shut you down, I'm canceling my premium membership and moving to Rumble permanently. The issue is, you know, one of the things I said to Google was maybe we just shut it down, move to a different platform, but maybe that's exactly what you want. Like if they took down our two biggest shows ever, which they said were fine for three years, it seems to me like, I know this, I've suggested this, I've had some conversations there. Like the, the idea is, they can't ban Timcast IRL instantly. They need to do things so that when it does get banned, they'll say, oh, well, but he had several strikes over the past several months. What were we supposed to do? So they look through all our episodes, retroactively enforce against two of them, giving us a warning. The next thing that happens is in a month from now, because I took the training, which takes 90 days for the warning to resolve. A couple months from now, they'll say, oh, episode 412. Uh, look what we found. Strike. Now you can't broadcast for a week. Exactly. Because if they came outright right now and banned us, there would be a huge stink, a huge conundrum. There'd probably be a, a lawsuit. It'd, it'd be crazy. So instantly I'm like, okay, here we go. Game's on. I get it. 
We'll see. Um, as I mentioned, we're talking with top men, so I don't want to say too much. But there's a strong possibility that this entire YouTube channel has all of its videos purged within a week. And then what we end up doing is the show is on YouTube for a week before being permanently deleted and then being archived on other platforms or maybe even being on other platforms. The YouTube clips will be up for maybe a month before being deleted. I don't know. People do watch old episodes. They do. We can see it in the analytics. And people do watch older clips. Sometimes clips will get views for a month or two. But uh, what do we do? You know, that's what YouTube wants. That's the world they've created. They outright said they would like to be irrelevant. I love this. I love this. Uh, I remember meeting with Google 11 years ago, and they were like, we are losing to Netflix and we need to compete. Okay, well, here's why you lose. Netflix has edgier content than we've ever had. Crazier content. They have ancient alien conspiracy stuff on, on Netflix. You can't even have that on, on YouTube. They'll ban you. I mean, they do, but like you never know. YouTube will just destroy your company overnight. What sane person wants to start a business? That's why I've been saying for a long time. If you're looking to get into this, you start on Rumble. You don't start on YouTube. To be fair, I will stress this. We need Rumble to launch their ad network. We need uh, we need that ad revenue. And and uh, they have some, but it, it, it doesn't compare. Uh, same thing for X. X is pretty good. The uh, ad share has gone up. And so what we need is there. Th th this, is, this is a component of X functionality. If X had a live player with a live chat feed, that would be massive oh, yeah. for generating revenue. Because when you post a tweet or an X post, what happens is if ads appear in it, everybody who sees it generates revenue and you get a share of that. That's fantastic. It's awesome. I have 2 million followers, 2 million, 10,000 followers on X, hundreds of millions of impressions. And I think I get like a thousand bucks a week, maybe like 5,000 bucks a month or something that will not run a company. It's fantastic for me just posting garbage and satire and jokes and nonsense on the platform. You know, it's good income, but it certainly can't run a company. I wonder if we were to get hundreds of millions of impressions on a show like this, it, I don't know if it would generate the revenue we need it to. It's hard. It is. Ad revenue is very different from membership revenue. Membership revenue is asking a person to directly give that 10 bucks. And then you have, man, this is, this is also difficult too, is inflation. And nothing I can say about that. Inflation makes it harder because, you know, it gets to a point where we have to pay people, people more to cover the cost of gas and rent insurance. But then the cost of, of running this show goes up. We have to then ask everyone to pay more. But then if we do, we might just lose members outright. So it's difficult. It's real tough, man. Oh, YouTube's on the fritz. Of course. Not surprised. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, I would have been super honored to be on IRL. We called. Ray. But you, had, it was like a last minute thing. Our guest got, uh, had, a, had an emergency. And then uh, I was like, oh man, we got to have Raymond on the show. Yeah. Like everybody knows who he is. Yes. So it would like, everybody would be, would, would, it would be awesome. Uh, but we'll, 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 another time, another time. It's, it's, it's out in the ether now. We, we will plan for it. I love meeting him was kind of like meeting a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> what a cool name too, right? I mean, you got it all. I like Raybert G. Stanbert Jr. <laughs> Just like somebody decided to make a parody of Raymond. That's funny. Was it Bertman? Dr. Tran said, you or Ian said something bad about Israel. That's what happened. And this was three years ago, though. I'm like, nobody was talking yeah, about it. And I'm, uh, I mean, yeah, who knows? I'm pretty neutral. I'm, I'm, I like seeing both sides, but, you know, I digress. Silver Screen uh, Psychopathy says, you talk a lot about not supporting evil corporations, but you're paying screw tube. Time to head over to Rumble, baby. The tube doesn't want you. I'm sure Rumble will be, will be happy to have you. Let's go. I will just simply stress again, I have spoken with top men. Um, we'll see what happens next week, but I don't pay YouTube. They pay it's, me. It's an Indiana Jones reference, by the way. You ever seen uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark at the end of the movie? Where's the Ark? Uh, it's being taken care of by top men. Right. Who's that? Top men. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got goosebumps. Top men. <laughs> Dude. And then it shows the guy in the warehouse yeah. and he's like carting it. Oh, top men. An Indiana Jones reference. Oh, All right. Best movie. John Eddy says, my cousin Katie had a blood vessel pop in her brain, causing her to have a fatal heart attack. Her parents need help with final expenses. There's a GoFundMe for her. Katie Rodriguez Sholo. Thank you. Sorry to hear, man. That's crazy. Yeah. 
it's i will stress to everybody we are on rumble all of the clips are on rumble the full live show isn't but uh you know we'll see what happens amish man says this is all a publicity stunt ahead of timcast moving to the x platform next week nothing uh they literally took our episodes down um youtube deleted them sent us notifications the YouTube video is struggling to play right now. Is, is other people uh, experiencing that? I'm clear. Looks good on my end. Looks like YouTube, like YouTube on Iron is, is like on the verge of crashing. Yeah. James Savick says, my warning to YouTube, ban Tim and I am gone. Look, man. Remember when they banned Alex Jones and Milo and Paul Joseph Watson from all these platforms? They don't care. What they're looking at is it's political. There are employees there who just got arrested because they want Google to divest from Israel. I guarantee you there are there are managers at YouTube who hate Israel and don't like the fact that this show has nuance on the subject matter. Phil's defended Israel on, on several occasions. Uh Oh, can't have that. I've been thinking lately that there's this big, like big picture earth politics. There's this global business that's happening. There's all this business going on. And if you come up with an ideology, the global business will be like, can we tolerate this ideology? Is this ideology going to derail our, our global business? If it's not, we'll accept it. If it is, okay, then you're going to have to find a way to they'll let the population maul the ideology and figure out. And then if the population can come up with a way to integrate that ideology to make global business a little better, they'll let it. But if you push the ideology too hard without showing them that you're going to make business better, they'll kill you. So you, you've got to be, or they'll ban you or they'll do. So when you, it's good to have ideology, but you've got to learn how to synchronize it with the business of earth. Jason Dixon says, Tim, I'd like to sell 10 Bitcoin and invest in Timcast. Timcast has no investors. I am the sole owner and uh, none of its other uh, companies, related companies, have any uh, shared interest as well. SCNR has a, a partial ownership from Bill Ottman of Minds.com, who's a good friend. But uh, I don't believe Timcast will ever take investment. You know, I say I, I don't believe because I don't, maybe I die at some point. The issue is just that... Um, we want to expand cultural endeavors and grow. And so the money that comes in through everything basically funds and supports the mission and the operation. The business, it's like we, we've gone over expenses and like salaries and all that stuff. And we're like, man, it's just it, like the bulk of the costs are travel, accommodation, massive expenses. It could be upwards of like $3,000 per day. So a lot of money uh, in, in that regard. And then we have uh, international guests, people who come from Europe. The craziest thing is that we were looking at a flight to Texas and it was two two 2,500 round trip. Whoa. Yeah. And we're not talking first class. And I was like, wow. What the, the other thing too is we book a lot of travel um, within like a week or two because a, a lot of guests yeah. shift around. And uh, the problem is that if we book someone like two months in advance, which we sometimes do, and then book their flights and they cancel on us, we lose that money. We've also had certain people be like, I missed the flight or I can't take the flight. And so it ends up costing a lot of money. The, the crazy expense is, is driving. If we, if we had a studio next to an airport, it would be a lot cheaper, but a lot noisier. It's funny. That's how, for me too, when I travel, the flights are like 150 bucks, but to get to the airport and back is 180 with an Uber. It's crazy. We're so far in the woods. I mean, and to be honest with you, like the, the cost of travel and stuff, it's not going down because the, the cost of oil is, is not going anywhere but up unless there's some yeah. kind of change in in the u.s policy so all right nor Allah he says if you post and stream to rumble the way you do to youtube i will stream and watch timcast irl there we all have that app on our roku ask crowder how loyal fan base can be here's a hundred bucks a show of good faith i really appreciate it my friend one of the uh concerns is that i think around 60 percent of viewers watch on the youtube uh youtube app on their tvs mm. so they're not chatting they're not super chatting they're sitting on their couch with their friends and family and they turn the TV on. This is one of the craziest things that uh, I didn't know for a long time because we look at the concurrent viewership and we're like, wow, we have 44,000. Total viewership is actually much bigger than that. We can't track that because we don't have the same tools as like Nielsen ratings. But uh, I ended up learning that like a guy, his wife and his friend or kids will be watching the show. They'll like, it'll be the end of the day and they'll turn the show on the TV. They'll open up the YouTube app, press play. And then there's like three or four people in one room watching the show. That counts as one person in the concurrent viewership. Yeah. So there's, there's no real way to track all that. So we, we, we don't actually know the full size of viewership. What we have with the concurrent viewers is not people. It's screens. And it's around 60 to 70% television screens, which means the viewership's actually a lot bigger. It's crazy. 
And so then, you know, people will come and be like, wow, you get 40,000 concurrent viewers, you average that? And I'll be like, screens. So if we're talking like your average family or whatever, and these are people in their 30s, and they may, it may just be like, at, at most, like two people, we're looking at concurrent, concurrent viewership is actually closer to around like 70 or 80. Yeah. Some people are watching on their phones and laptops too, for sure. And that's, that's, the, that's the big challenge too with moving to another platform is that uh, people would have to switch to Roku's and other things like that. But I do believe we have a solution. It's just, you know, the other, other top men that I've spoken with, uh, they want to get their ducks in a row before we, we say what's going on. Uh, Andrew Starr says, no one cares about your salary, dude. Well, they sure do chat a whole lot endlessly about how I'm only doing it for money. So I make it a point to point out, I would live a much more comfortable life if I only did the morning show. That was the original plan for IRL with the van. I could just drive around and do the, do, do my morning show, my monologue clips anywhere. Could be skating and skiing anywhere I wanted, living in a van down by the river. But then we did this show and uh, decided to, you know, build stuff, I guess. Yeah. Build stuff. We got to give back. Yep. And then we hired a bunch of people and then we built a bunch of infrastructure and tried to make it professional and better. And we keep expanding. The new studio, sorely needed. Definitely. People complain that the lighting makes them look like zombies. <laughs> yeah. So, it can be pretty bright sometimes. It's, it's, the it's new mostly, studio it's, looks so good. It's mostly it's like, the balance. It's like cinema quality. Wesley was just nailed it. Yeah. Dude, it's, he's so good. And it's not it's, just Wesley. I think Aaron was involved too. I'm I like, was impressed with how thin I looked. Oh, good, good job, man. Yeah. You've been working I'm like, out quite a bit. No, it's not that. It's that these cameras, oh, are yeah. like, they flatten your face. Yeah. It's funny too that it, the weirdest thing is people who are like, Tim is short and fat. And I'm like, then they watch a video of me skating. They're like, oh, Tim's kind of tall actually. He's yeah. taller than me. It's got to be the beanie. Know. When the beanie no. comes off, man, your brain, it's just it's, people, it's, when yeah, you see what you, it's actually people, a mirror. Yeah. When they see what the beanie, it's like, big. okay, he actually is a genius. Cause oh, you see okay. like, it's a large brain. <laughs> Relatively. Yeah. Sure. It's pretty interesting. But I was actually surprised cause I, I don't know what it is. Lenses have a huge impact. Did you guys ever watch a, a video of how lenses change how, yeah. how people look? Yeah. And so, uh, these new cameras make everybody look very different. Everybody looks like, everybody looks pretty tall. Cause Sick. it make, yeah, it makes you look <laughs> slim. I don't know. It's it's a it's a bigger room. It's a a, a fixed lens, and they're uh, they're higher quality uh, cameras. They're they're actual um, DSLRs. They're not these are these are camcorders. These are really good ones, and they do look great. They also but... lit the backgrounds, which might be causing dynamic shape in your. So you can see there's some shape definition in the bodies. Yeah. So the new studio has spotlight lighting. Each person has a light that shines directly on them plus uh, uh, LED bar backlighting. And then there's like windows and stuff. So decorations and things on the wall will be harder to see because the room's a lot bigger too. But uh, it looks great. Monday's going to be epic. Who do, we, who do we have on Monday? Monday Who's the first Monday. guest? Is that Scott Pressler? Oh, sh yeah. I looks like yeah. it. I love him, man. That'll be great. Yeah, Pressler will be our first guest in the new studio. Gonna cool. be a, gonna be fun on a bun. Let's grab some more super chats. What do we have? YouTube's on the fritz for me. I'm still still got it here. Amir Habibi says, "Mr. Bocus makes some good points. We need more podcasts with him as a guest." Well, rest in peace, Mr. Bocus. But uh, we are planning on having Seamus on at some point. Um, you know, you know it'd be great if we had Seamus and Seamus. Uh, I mean, yeah. Seamus one nice. and Seamus two. That'd be nice. Yeah, Seamus one is the cat. Yep. Seamus two is the cartoonist. We don't have a lot of um, respect for cartoonists over here. <laughs> you know, dirty AI. <laughs> Seamus should be over. here. I believe he'll be here all next week. So we're excited to have him back. I think Seamus is fun. So yeah, he's a good dude. I love him because he says he's a Christian, but he likes to question things. No, I'm just kidding, Seamus. I believe you. Don't put words in his mouth. Yeah, yeah. Especially Clint, I'm going to make you question everything. <laughs> Clint Torres says, howdy, people. Apologies for the tardiness. Uh, Clint, I had hello. to see a lady about a cat, Phil. You should do a couple of gym sessions with Tim. It sounds like he has a lot to teach about going hard. He uh, definitely does. Today was nuts. Why? Because Richie wouldn't let me stop skating. So I was trying to do a run on the mini ramp. And these are not even like the craziest tricks. It's just I, I haven't skated a mini ramp in a long, long time. So I was doing a board slide, fakie disaster, axle, back disaster, 
Nolly front, uh, Nolly front disaster, no stall, switch blunt, and then um, like a like a rock to turn around, and then a kickflip five zero. And I got one, but I hit the I hit the wall with my hand, and so that's not clean. And then I was like, I'm so beat, I'm done. And then Richie was like, you got to get a clean one. So I skated for another forty minutes at max heart rate, and then uh, I couldn't get it. I was like, look, the one I got is what I got. But then I was like on the verge of dying he's really good at pushing you i like richie he's a great teacher richie's great <clears throat> yeah good dude we were we were trying to get him to come on the show but he wasn't here yeah so we're trying to find man. everybody caleb says tell the quartering to quit quit it crying and trying ear ear off your back he wants you to stream to rumble because it would benefit him directly so he's pitching fits like a woman well i don't know exactly what he's saying but i think <clears throat> like everyone's trying to make Help help Rumble get bigger and bigger and bigger. I can respect that. I would just like to stress. And in in all fairness, we need to make money off the clips so that we can pay people who work here. We put the clips on Rumble either way. Those clips don't generate money. It's like very, very little. So we lost a lot of ad revenue by doing so, but we want to be on Rumble. We think Rumble's important. We think it's good. The live show is the biggest driver of memberships, TimCast.com, because when we're live, we say, hey, the members only show starts now. Go watch. And then tons of people instantly sign up. I The fear is that if we disrupt that and we don't see the same turnaround because we don't know, we stop generating memberships and then we become a sinking ship. And then we have to figure out the stability point where, OK, how many memberships do we generate through streaming on other platforms? And if the number is that it's lower because we've deranked ourselves on YouTube, split our audience up, some people can't find the stream or otherwise, then we have to say, how do we shrink the ship to maintain its current size based on the current level of growth? Right now, where we're at, we're at with YouTube, we have moderate to slow growth. It's, it, I would call it stable. And that's great. Then there's an opportunity for biz dev with like Casper and other things. Other companies have asked us to stream on their platform. And I said, if we do that, and it reduces our current level of memberships, then we have to start cutting fat. I don't want to do that. We are, we, are a, we are stable where we're at in everything we're doing. We're seeing moderate viewership growth on YouTube, moderate membership growth. And so that allows us to invest in other ways to shore up the defenses for the show. If we venture off into the unknown, don't generate the revenue, it's only a risk for us. So what I've said to all these companies is mitigate that risk, deal. And most of them have said, we don't know if we can we can do that. We'll see what happens next week. YouTube has changed the game and opened the door for a lot of competitors in ways they should not have by doing this. The fact that they took down one of the craziest podcasts ever. I'm 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 offended by this. Alex Jones, Joe Rogan, Blair White, Michael Malice, Luke Rutkowski, Ian Crossland, me, uh, Drew Hernandez. I said Drew Hernandez. Yeah, Drew Hernandez was there. You just yeah, you just did. Who am I forgetting? Lydia was there too. It was back when Lydia was on the show. All uh, of these people on this crazy show. It's a cacophony of nonsense. Joe Rogan's laughing. Jones is going nuts. Michael Malice is laughing. YouTube deleted it. That's crazy. Yep. That's, That's so crazy. Weird. One of the craziest podcasts ever. It was just such a simple show. Yeah. And they were just I like, after even, three years. I didn't even bring up Klaus Schwab. I wanted to bring up Klaus Schwab. And I should have, because it would have been funny. I remember the moment when I could have said it, too. It was a funny moment when you asked Joe to do DMT or something, and he or ayahuasca, and he was like, what? Who are you? Yeah, he was okay. like, well, I'm going to wake up, and I, why didn't I puke? I was like, God, this guy's funny as fuck. He's not just, he's not famous for no reason. The I guy's can't hilarious. believe they did. That's, that's insane. He was funny. <clears throat> wow. All right, we'll grab a couple more of these here super chats. We are going to have that members only uncensored show, and we'll talk to you guys. So become a member. Support the show. You know, I do believe... That if we uh, were, so here, here's something I, I think if, if we were to like say, okay, YouTube, screw you. And we chose any other platform, we would see a massive burst in memberships instantly. But then people, people's, their, their, their memberships, they, they cancel them. Their cards expire. We don't have a membership team that calls people and asks them to re-sign up. I feel like that's annoying. Maybe we should. Maybe there's a lot of people who don't realize their memberships lapsed and they would love to stay members. Yep. If think, we just had someone hit them up and be like, hey, we see that your membership stopped. Would you want to keep going or no? Yeah, I know what you mean because it is annoying to get a call you don't want to get. But I think Valuetainment does that they kind do. of thing. They have a, we do like not. a dedicated marketing facility. Maybe if we had like two people and all they did was like send messages to people and say, 
hey, we noticed your membership dropped off. We'd like to, we'd love to have you back. Is there anything we can do? And if they said no, I like, thank you and have a nice day. And maybe people would be like, oh, I didn't realize here. So yeah, sign me back up. Mm -hmm. Phone calls, great. particular phone calls, hearing a voice. I guess, you know, I wish I could do it. I can't. AI we'll just, we'll could. just, yeah, we'll get an AI that sounds like me, but like, I am Tim Pool. Ooh, we get AI to do Trust it. me. <laughs> Please sign up for my website. Welcome to the future. Actually, I, if you could just get a vo an AI voice filter, anyone could do it for no, you and they just sound like you. It can't do me. Oh, really? Yeah, it's uh, weird. We, we've we tried a couple times to take a recording of my voice and I've even talked to like Seamus about it and he's like impersonating Tim is hard to do. It's hmm. like, yeah, I don't know why. That's People have told me that it's hard to do an impression of me. You do sound very neutral. There's not a lot of uh, things that you could actually grab onto and, and yeah. exaggerate a little bit to make Joe it. Rogan too. Yep. Joe Rogan's a hard voice to impersonate. I, I've seen weed. people who have tried, but- there's ways he talks you can get, but the actual sound of his voice, like people can imitate Trump and it sounds like Trump, you know? Yeah. But we tried putting my voice th into the AI yeah. voice generator and it sounded weird. Yeah. It sounded like this. Hi, I am Tim Pool. I'm like, oh. that is not. Yeah, because your voice, it kind of sounds like high, but it's deep. It's got like, uh -huh. it's like, it's like low register, but kind of like the upper, I don't know. And it's sharp too. It's got like a sharpness to it. The way you like finish a sentence and finish a, a sound a lot of times. Karsten Ellsworth says, Tim, I'm a professional marketer and longtime TimCast member looking for a job change. The new marketing effort sounds fun. If you're hiring, I'd love to join the culture war. Where can I send a resume? I don't know. Um, I don't know that we actually would bring on someone. You know, Dane already is our marketing guy. I think all we would do is just like make ads and do like awareness campaigns and just generate ubiquity. It's not so much that the ads make people watch, but it's that everyone becomes familiar with the show. And you know what I was thinking of doing? What if every Monday we put up an ad on uh, a variety of platforms that says like, this week on TimCast IRL, we've got, and then it shows the guests. And it's like, watch live Monday through Friday this week. And then we just change that every week because then we're directly advertising something. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe that. It's too bad. It takes too long to get ads approved because uh, if if YouTube actually did quick turnaround on ad approvals, I would do a daily, you know, where it's like tonight at 8 p.m. Check out, mm. but you then know, you Filibanti on Tim Cast. The IRL. occasional the, when the guest doesn't show in the marketing, a big marketing thing for something that doesn't happen might be a, a problem. I don't That's, think it's fine. Uh, all the big cable networks do this. And then if someone doesn't show up, they're just like, unfortunately, they weren't able to make it. All right, everybody, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our Rumble channel at rumble.com slash timcast IRL and subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter, or I should say X, at uh, Timcast and the show, of course, at Timcast IRL. We're going to go to the members only show right now. So become a member at timcast.com. Like I said, Phil, what's going on? I am uh, Phil that remains on Twix. I am Phil that remains official on Instagram. The band is all that remains. You can follow us on uh, Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, uh, I don't know what are the other ones. YouTube, you know, Amazon Music, Amazon Music. There you go. YouTube, you know, the internet. And don't forget, the left lane is for crime. Oh, another thing, check out the All That Remains Instagram page. It's All That Remains. Uh, okay. It's Instagram.com slash All That Remains. Uh, keep an eye on that because it just got wiped today, and there are things do coming. You, do you have a date for the song's release? Not yet, but it's, right. it will be. It will be announced probably in the next few days or week or so. So keep an eye out. And Bucko, did you have any any last words? Okay. All right. Yeah. Good job. Uh, I'm Ian Crossland. Follow me at Ian Crossland on Rumble, on YouTube, which I'm still on. I've had my channel for 18 years or whatever the hell. Uh, follow me all over the place. Every social network. I probably got a presence except TikTok. I don't, I don't mess with it. And I'm going to be in Austin on April 27th for the Minds Festival. Uh, it's going to be awesome, dude. Uh, Toby Turner's kicking off the show with the music set. I may play a song with him. And we're going to be doing, it's a night of, of roundtable debates, discussions, comedy, music. It's going to be fantastic. You go to festival.minds.com and get your tickets there. Use promo code Ian for 20% off. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you there. And let's, I'll probably be hanging out with people after the show and meet the crowd and everything. So catch you there. See you. All right. Uh, thanks, y'all. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. We'll see you all over at TimCast.com. Not tomorrow, but in a few minutes. <laughs> thanks for hanging out. <laughs>